Um, I'm just going to go around um, and everyone can give a quick introduction. Okay. Uh, so let's do that. Okay, cool. So um, we'll start at the top left. Diba Mama, do you want to go ahead and give yourself an introduction? Yes, I would love that. Uh, thank you so much for having me on today. Chud, it's been a long time since I've been on a panel on your show. I'm really looking forward to it. My name is Demon Mama. You can find me on YouTube by the name Demon Mama or at my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. We have an awesome community. We talk about a lot of politics. We do a lot of debate. And um, I, interestingly, talk about cults and stuff and religion relatively frequently as I grew up in an extremist Christian cult myself and have left that cult uh, some time ago. Um... If you're interested in any of that, come on over and uh, and hang out with us. I always do a Q&A after every panel, and uh, I think this is going to be a very, very interesting panel. So it's really great to be able to talk to you all today, and uh, thanks for having me on, Chad. Cool. And next up, uh, Know Nothing. Hey, I'm Know Nothing. Um, is my mic good? Uh, yeah, I'll just adjust the volume on my end, so just keep talking. You're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, I'm mostly on Twitter, but I stream once in a while and show up on these panels once in a while. Um, I find cults pretty fascinating, so that was um, a good entry point to this discourse, and I like discourse in general and arguing with people, so that worked too. So happy to be here and uh, looking forward to it. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll go to the bottom right now. Uh, Mouthy Infidel. Hey, uh, I'm Mouthy Infidel. I do political commentary on YouTube. Um, I guess um, I got involved in this discourse and somewhat of an anomaly since I'm not frequently involved in much drama or discourse online. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess um, I uh, got a lot of shit because I bravely came out against child raping far right doomsday cults and a lot of people didn't like that. Um, I so yeah, I guess that's, that's where I'm at. To begin with. Okay. Um, and finally, uh, well, until Viv gets here at least, Yep. Mel. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mel. Um, I'm a B tier shit poster on Twitter. Um, I basically just talk about communism and piss everybody off uh, for fun, sometimes not for fun at all. Um, really, I don't really have any like crazy takes about Waco. Um, I'm just going to start it off and we're going to have a fun conversation full of wonderful, intellectual, um, and groundbreakingly interesting things to say, especially from No Nothing. Um, but yeah, Waco bad, everyone. Okay, there we go. Um, so when Viv gets here, we'll let her in for introduction. Um, and um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. But before before Viv gets here, then what we'll do, we'll just get started. Um, so what I thought we could do, I I've got a few ideas of like specific talking points we can get to if it comes to it. Um, but I think just a broad conversation about the discourse as it's occurred. I think everyone's probably got some familiarity with each other's positions. I know you were all, I think, responding to each other to one degree or another on Twitter. <laughs> um so so yeah i mean you know obviously we're here for the a bit of fucking entertainment maybe it gets spicy maybe it won't i don't know but you know it's nice just to flesh things out a bit other than twitter i think so that's another reason i think it's good to do this um so what i'll do we'll go the opposite way around that we did for the intros um so what i want each of you to do is just to really state what kind of broad position and some basic thoughts you've got about waco and the situation and what happened um and then once we've done that so everyone just has their, ready, their time to say you that ready people once everyone's done that we'll just move into like an open discussion and i'll moderate and step in if it gets too too spicy or heated or people are talking too much and stuff yep. like that so yep, yep, yep. Um, mel i'll go to you first could you just outline how's your the audio by the way is it waco? fine yeah um so i think what's interesting about waco is it really is a good demonstration of like the power of the state the reaction of the state and the populace is like also reaction to the state um i don't necessarily hold like the branch davidians and any sort of like ridiculously like high pedestal or whatever um i do think they're just as much of victims in this situation as much as they are perpetrators within the own violence that has happened um so like david koresh like love him or hate him as a person he was incredibly intelligent he manipulated sure. several hundred people got them in a compound and some pretty despicable fucking things happened um, and the federal government was trying to figure out a way to go about the situation with the most minimal amount of lives lost. Um, unfortunately, there was a cultural climate surrounding the United States at the time. There was Ruby Ridge um, in the 80s, and then there was sort of like the end of the satanic panic, which creates this sort of volatile environment where, you know, stranger danger, child cults, child predators, it like sort of predicated this idea that if we don't do something to save these people, regardless of however, like, we decide to do it then they're going to die anyway and so I, I felt like 
I think the reason why Waco is so complicated because you have to look at it through both like you have to look at the state response like these people are victims like 25 like children did also die in this um i do think there were a lot of people that like if they see some you know if they see like well because these people happen to be child predators like oh well i'm happy that they all died but like there were innocent people that could have been saved i mean the operation like we could go through like point by point things that happened within the operation but it was like completely botched um the branch civilians also like didn't help either um, they were also like incredibly stubborn and Koresh had several opportunities to pretty much like surrender and give up and have no casualties happen, but he refused to because he's a maniacal narcissist. So like, I don't know, it's, I don't it's really think, I think, I think Waco should be used as a talking point to talk about state response and power and like the monopoly of violence, but not really about like child victims or like weird culture panics. Like, oh, it's going to go, it's going to be a bloodbath. I just care about I can like tell you that right how now. people feel about the state and government responses to like protesting because like these set precedent to all kinds of events okay cool um so next up i'll throw over to you Malthy and fidel uh go ahead and let, lay your position out yeah sure so um the facts around the waco case are actually pretty clear based on like all of the research that i've done um basically um the branch davidians were a far-right doomsday cult <laughs> who were stockpiling illegal weapons raping children doing a bunch of nasty stuff the government obtained a justified and legal uh, search and arrest warrant, warrant. They approached the compound. They were shot at, according to all of the reporter eyewitnesses uh, on the ground. The Branch Davidians shot first. Um, then, uh, after like months of or weeks of negotiations, wherein yeah, literally, uh, the though. ATF H attempted WF. to, and the government attempted to negotiate with the Branch Davidians, and even. Uh, um, uh, went along with uh, some of the Branch Davidians' demands, for example, broadcasting a message that David Koresh had wanted played. Um, the Branch Davidians then went back on the negotiations that they'd previously agreed to, um, and then eventually uh, lit their own compound on fire, killing uh, countless people. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I'm not trying to say that the government is in no way at fault here. The government undeniably fucked up in a variety of ways. Um, the government even adapted its um, policy with regards to responses to these kinds of situations afterwards um, because of um, a, a lot of the issues that they were running into when trying to address uh, and respond to the Branch Davidians uh, situation. Um, so yeah, I don't think that the government isn't at fault in any way, but by and large, the Branch Davidians were the ones who were breaking the law, refusing to comply with the warrant, lit the compound on fire, um, so I, I think this is an issue that a lot of people are very weirdly attempting to like both sides in a way that I think is like pretty silly. Okay, uh, no nothing. Yeah, sure. So I pretty much entered the discourse following um, one of Nell's tweets where she says something like, um, "This Waco discourse is showing that the state is that libs will defend the state against anyone they don't like or something like that." I can go find the exact tweet, but that's. I kind of found off to me based on everything else I was seeing, which is why like I entered the discourse and um, we can talk about that later about philosophically about what the state can do, whether it's okay to just say that the Davidians were people we don't like, or whether we should more call them um, a cult that was raping children. But um, as for the federal government's handling of it, I think they were pretty, um, after looking into it more, pretty terrible, honestly. Um, I think it wasn't like intentional, but they had a fundamental misunderstanding, I'd say, with who, what the Branch Davidians and David Koresh were and what they wanted and what they believed. And that led to them negotiating in a way that was kind of doomed to fail. Okay. Um, Dima Mama? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, thank you. Um, yes. Uh, so my position on Waco um, is uh, that... Uh, so there's a couple of things I want... I, I want to go over. First of all, um, there is no doubt that the history of the United States with regard to religious minorities in general is incredibly, incredibly spotty. Now, um, there are some religious minorities in the country that are terrifying, disgusting, right-wing, abusive, uh, n narcissistic cults like, um, like, like the Branch Davidians. And there are others that are not really described like that who have um, nonetheless suffered um, targeting by the state. Um, damn near every religious minority in the United States, including Catholics, Mormons, even Scientologists, have at some time experienced legitimate um, 
uh, legitimate persecution by the state of the United States. And I don't think that this can be overlooked in the issue of Waco. Many of these groups um, are, uh, whether uh, fairly or not, concerned that they will at one day, at one point, suffer a Waco-like incident. And keep in mind that Waco was not the first such incident. There have been many incidents um, when a separatist group or um or even just a dissident group um has been targeted and for persecution by the state now does that mean that it's not warranted in every single case no i think that there was absolutely something that needed to be done about uh the branch davidians however what we have now seen um and now that we are you know we have the benefit of hindsight 30 years of hindsight We've now seen that um, Waco became a cultural touchstone for some of the most extreme examples um, or the most extreme people in uh, in in the conservative uh, sphere, in the far right sphere. Um, Timothy McVeigh cited Waco as one of his primary motivations for the Oklahoma City bombing. Alex Jones got his start reporting on Waco, um, and this has lived on in the anti-state rights um mentality for a long time and i don't think that we can easily look past the potential for radicalization that poor handling or even just imperfect handling of these events can um, cause especially in the context of the history of the united states and i think it requires us to begin to think about how cults are are dealt with how the state approaches cults and especially how states uh how the state deals with extremist cults such as the branch davidians uh, i don't think this is a clear-cut issue at all um a lot of the takes i saw on twitter which i don't think i actually talked about this at all on twitter personally um but i did see quite a lot of takes and the takes on twitter i can say were um laughably simplistic um and uh i i don't really i think there's some attempt to downplay some of that in this panel i i hope that people will just own up to what they said on twitter um i saw takes going around such as ah that the fbi was 100 percent correct i saw things saying that you know memes being posted about fbi agents being shot all kinds of stuff like that that's but hopefully we can move past that and talk about more serious issues. But generally, that's my position. Okay, great stuff. Uh, and finally, Viv, um, because you just arrived, welcome. Hello, good to see you. Um, I'll just, uh, first of all, give you a chance to just introduce yourself. And then if you can give just a broad perspective and take on Waco, and then it'll just be an open discussion. So go ahead. Sure thing. Uh, hey, I'm Max Vivian Wolf on uh, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, I mostly talk about cults and extremism on uh, on Twitch here, and uh, I also write articles on Medium. Um, but the majority of stuff that I do, I just I'm just posting constantly on Twitter. Um, I have chronic Twitter brain. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Dima Mum was right. Like uh, Timothy McVeigh was absolutely inspired by the uh, by by Waco, as were a slew of like um, uh, right-wing people and, and still continue to be inspired by Waco to this day. Timothy McVeigh actually went to uh, the siege, uh, went to try and uh, view view the siege between the Davidians and the uh, FBI ATF. I think uh, he was definitely selling like, um, like bumper stickers and like pro-gun literature, but you might actually have been selling copies of the Turner Diaries as well because he was pretty famous for doing that around gun shows. Um, but I can't remember if he was selling them at that particular time. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Mel stole like half of my points, but the... <laughs> But so I don't want to go over ground that's already been trod. But the angle I come at this from is um, like a certain degree of empathy for the for the cult members uh, who are under like an extreme amount of coercive control. Uh, their environment is not one where they have like a huge amount of choices. And uh, I think I came into the conversation on Twitter at least. I literally only made like one post. I think it was in response to something Mouthy Infidel said that seemed to suggest that this was a cult of uh, of of basically pedophiles that were raping children. Um, and that's an extremely broad brush to be painting absolutely everybody with. I mean, there's uh, 
I, I don't think there's any evidence of anybody other than Koresh having engaged in sexual activity with the children. There might be one or two. Yes. Uh, but yes, Koresh perfect. like deliberately kept all the males in the in the cult celibate. Uh, and took their wives for his own. This was like a major part of the cult, uh, cult and a major part of the um, like coercive control within the cult. Uh, so it would be unlikely that like the other dudes were like having sex with the kids um, because they because they all very much believed that like it was only Koresh that was allowed to uh, because he had to continue the lineage of David or whatever, like his house of David. These are all um, lefties. So lefties. Yes. I just leftist. I don't Leftish. like this tarring all cult members as being evil or like that they deserve to die or anything like that because I I I tend to view pretty much all those members as being victims uh, of Koresh who was described as using the Bible as a weapon um, to manipulate and control. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, so I'm going to throw it over the conversation. Um, I think I'm probably just going to throw it to Malfi and Phil first because there were some critiques made of, of Malfi's position, which I think is only fair he responds to, and then it'll be a conversation. Um, unfortunately, I didn't manage to find another guest to balance this out, so it might be a bit imbalanced. I'm going to try and bear that in mind in the moderation. Shut the left. Um, and in about 30 minutes, maybe an hour or so, um, I'll see. I think there's a few people that might want to come on to stand the FBI. So we'll see if we can sort that out. Um, but anyway, Melfi, I'm going to throw it over to you. If you just Made respond them, to some of I these believe. critiques you've made of your position specifically, and then it'll be a conversation, okay? Yeah, sure. So, uh, like, it's weird because you say critiques of my position. I don't even think these are critiques of my position, right? I think this is like, these are critiques of very weird interpretations of my position. So in terms of, do I think the cult members are evil? No, I'm a hardcore determinist, okay? I don't think anybody's like inherently like evil. I don't play these kinds of games. Um, my original tweet was in response to Shoe on Head, who was literally posting like, haha, weren't the Branch Davidians so based? They did an epic <laughs> own against the FBI. What an epic anti-establishment moment. And I was like, yeah, you probably shouldn't be fucking memeing about this. Children are raped. Like, this isn't, like, th these aren't a group that you should be standing, right? Of course, to, like, uh, as far as, like, whether or not David Koresh should be, like, the only person we hold, like, morally liable for the child rape, pretty much everyone in the compound knew about the child rape. One of the things that I was reading an FBI interview where the FBI was interviewing um, a person who left... Um, uh, the branch of video before the raid even happened. And basically what he said was like, oh, listen, the child rape was justified because in this instance, David Koresh got the parents' consent before raping the 14-year-old. Um, so this was something that was pretty well known within the compound. I think to say that Koresh uh, is the only one who should be like liable here is like kind of silly. Um, as far as did the... Uh, Branch Davidians deserve to die? Absolutely not. I don't think these people who were burned to death deserve to die. I think that the cult uh, was the ones who burned these people to death. And that's why I'm so critical of people who are playing like Apologia for this like murderous child raping cult. Can I can um, I just real quick yeah. ask you about some of your tweets? Now, I, I understand if you want to back it. out and do the little like the oo woo face and say this was just sh Twitter shit posting. No, I'll stand by literally but, yeah, anything um, I thought. You don't have it. to. You Here's a quote, a direct quote from your tweet twitter from march 2nd you mm -hmm. don't have to defend the branch davidians to say the fed's involvement was wrong yeah and then you responded yeah you kind of do why yep, would why would you say child raping doomsday cults are bad but we shouldn't be preventing them from operating and stockpiling illegal weapons i mean to me mm -hmm. that seems like a, a bit of a a, a bit of a a, a, a bit uh, to stand in opposition to what you're saying now so i just i just want to be clear about your position if you're going to say you're standing by anybody who says that the f the federal involvement may not have been uh appropriate um, which I believe is what you what you used here. Um, I think that 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 is standing in opposition to what you're saying. So I I, I don't really want to engage in like some oh. little game of dancing around and ooh woo shit. Like I would prefer if people would just bring no, their no, wait, wait. positions up. I mean, you literally you have an entire screed here of multiple tweets calling people who who criticized how the FBI handled it, calling them lef uh, lefty rape apologists. I feel like your rhetoric wait, on this wait, wait, wait. Okay, has been okay, rather okay. has been rather questionable. Okay, let me honestly let like Malfi did start to call me one. Okay, let, let, let Malfi and Phil respond. You denied that there was, okay. Mel no, I didn't. Like, I didn't Mel deny it. Mel is angry that I, I said, okay, I'm Mel. not angry. Okay, no, I, wait, 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 w
Wait, and I'm not no, angry. You posted a screenshot from Wikipedia after I said the cult was engaging in child rape, where you said Wikipedia though, and you showed a screenshot from Wikipedia that said like there wasn't child rape, even though that was like a completely that's, out of that's context. Kind of that's that's right. if, that's if, if, if Demon Mama, if Demon Mama is gonna like try and critique people for trying to ooh ooh around their points, you maybe you should be pointing your finger at Mel, who literally posted a screenshot. And I was talking to you. I certainly rape. have my critiques of of Mel, but I was sure. talking to you. So if sure. you would like to defend your position which stands in opposition to your opening statement i just want us to be clear it and honest here it does not no 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 it you literally said no in the beginning so the, you literally wait, wait, said heard, the wait wait demon mama i heard what i said okay you already read the tweet what i was saying there is that <laughs> You necessarily have to defend the Branch Davidians if you were saying that the FBI had no place uh, or the ATF had no place in intervening in what the Branch Davidians were doing. I will stand by that. The Branch Davidians were raping children, stockpiling illegal weapons. If, you, if you're saying that the government shouldn't intervene to stop that from happening, you necessarily have to engage in some form of like rape apology. I mean, I would argue that's, that's that the, it's that's pretty... That's the biggest reach I've ever heard in my life. Just because you, okay, just wait, because wait, wait. you want to critique a group, you think it always is, is it's some form of apology on that ma on that magnitude like come on what are you talking about yeah if you don't want to prevent rape from happening you're pro-child rape i'm sorry you don't want to own that position but that is like the, that's you're, the way you're framing this is so fucking fucked up oh, hold on hold on hold on okay hold on what the fuck? Can, I, can i get in here for just a second what point like did Mel say that she doesn't want to stop rape from happening <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you're standing in opposition to the government uh, intervening in a place where rape was happening to stop that rape from happening, um, I would say that it's pretty fair to say you're advocating that we shouldn't stop oh, rape from happening no. unless you want like no, a local no, no, that's, such logic, that's such logic. That's such that's... Okay, wait, then, then how did you want the, the rape to be stopped? Who's going to do it? You don't have shit to say. What's your no, what's your what solution you, like, then? I don't what's your understand. Solution? I don't understand you why you're the rape no, from happening, dude. Why are you so the government intervening to do that? Then what's your solution? Why are you so fixated on like children? Get like why is that you're your only pivoting. talking Jesus point here? Christ. No, this isn't a why pivot. Would you say that? No, this okay. isn't a pivot. Okay. I just don't know why you're so incredibly obsessed with like this particular part hey, of the Lonnie. case. I wasn't. I just never was arguing that. pivot. No, like it's you're, not a you're pivot. Literally saying, Can you just answer like, the question? It's not a pivot. Yeah, why don't you answer it's the question? It's not a pivot. You said, that the you said that you're not, uh, you said that you don't think we shouldn't have stopped it from happening, but the government I never said that. Where is there a tweet so or anything that I said where I don't think the government should have done nothing? Where is that? Where does that exist? Not. Okay, so you think you the government should... You deleted your tweets, so it's hard to find you, Yeah, you literally deleted all your tweets. You also said that if um, we supported what happened, uh, or uh, you, you said that the Waco discourse is showing how many lefties support using state power against people who we disagree with. So do you not the think disagree that that tweet... no the disagree with part no when I okay so I think when I when I said that it was super super broad it wasn't talking about Waco specifically Waco it was talking about like the Waco discourse because anytime anyone ever talks about Waco you kind of have to retroactively talk about every other kind of government standoff that's happened because they all kind of have operated the same way in a similar manner right so like we have move in 79 we have Ruby Ridge and I think it was like 68 or whatever like all these things are coherently related to the Waco and like the discourse around like this kind of epi like epitaph of state violence and so, so when, when I, I said people so when i said people that i don't like people that you don't like it doesn't it wasn't about the branch davidians it was okay, like the wait, most so vague this like literally we was the most vague sub of my about, fucking life no 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 what? when we were talking specifically about the branch davidians i was bringing up they were doing this this is what happened i think that the government intervening was justified you said with regards to the you literally said the Waco discourse with regards to this situation you think that people supporting the government involvement means they support like using state violence and now you're trying to say that oh well what I was actually saying was I was saying that like other things that happened that had nothing to do with Waco but like have also no, were similar I'm, I'm and happened in the saying, past like, the discourse, the discourse this is such is a, a weird pivot like I don't understand why you're I trying mean, to do this isn't, this, isn't, what you're this isn't a pivot I, this isn't like a pivot I don't know what okay okay Okay, sure. all right, so cool. there's a couple cool. things I want to address here. So first Wait, of all, can I continue the? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I don't know why well, you guys well, like. Well, I, well, I wanted to talk about Waco, not like fucking tweets. Like this is this is fucking. There's a reason why I've done this. I'm... Well, we're talking. It's the Waco discourse. Okay, you so, can so, just sorry. say say the dumbest shit on Twitter and then like. 
say, oh, I don't want to talk about that stuff. I talk about there. This is separate. Because no one cares I about that. Why do you guys care about tweets on Twitter? I wanted to spend, like, fucking this entire panel arguing over who said what on Twitter. If if that's going to be the entire panel, I might as well fuck off, honestly. Okay, C can we, yeah, I what I want to do, yeah, everyone, like... everyone's had a chance to speak, okay, but No Nothing and Viv haven't had much of a chance to speak. Viv, I'm going to let you speak because you've barely spoken at all, and then No Nothing, you can respond, and we'll go back into a conversation. So, Viv, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I want to go back to like what uh, Mouthy and Fennel said um, about the responsibility of the cult members for uh, for the sexual assault of the children by David Koresh, right? It's no denying like there's a certain amount of responsibility for anybody who knew, but that responsibility is extraordinarily diminished. There's a reason that Charles Manson died in prison uh, and some of the people who actually carried out the murders like got out, right? Like, there's, um, we we recognize that like people who are in those kinds of environments, right? They're, yeah, they're under a huge amount of pressure, huge amount of coercive control, right? And this isn't just like a, um, if you look at if you look at for example uh, some of the reports that are coming out in the search warrant or at the uh, fuck the sinful messiah, the the three articles published by the Waco Tribune, right? Like, these all had examples of the kinds of things that David Koresh was having people do, right? Standing guard for, like, 24 hours at a fucking time, uh, doing training exercises, keeping them constantly fucking exhausted, right? Like, it was, it, was, it was get up in the morning really fucking early, Bible study, eat, Bible study, eat, lectures and Bible study, eat, go to bed, do the same the next fucking day, right? Like, um, this wasn't an environment in which, like, a lot of people had... As, as the same degree of agency uh, that you would apply to somebody who's just like walking around doing whatever the fuck they want. Uh, and I think what that's the, the reason that like even the people who What's were going imprisoned. On? Can uh, you still hear me? Uh, we, mm -hmm. I can hear you. <clears throat> what happened there? Did What's going on? Oh, no, I think the Discord... stream went oh, so, down. <laughs> sorry, there was a massive lag spoke then, but we're back All now. Right. Sorry about that. Um, Wait, what, Viv, sorry, are you continue. back? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. I'm Massive lags about the feds. Um, the feds are doing their stream disruption gun. So, Viv, go ahead and keep going. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, and I, and I want to address the idea that I wouldn't um, just because like there were about five people who said it in chat, and I don't I don't want to address chat all night, but I I want to address the idea that I wouldn't say this about like the J five uh, J six rioters J five J six, um, uh, and uh, actually at the time I told you uh, don't worry when, we'll talk uh, about it more the, after. Uh, the lady was shot. Like, I was on Twitter Hindsight. saying, hey, please don't share, like, pictures of this lady's corpse being wheeled across Twitter. Like, imagine being the family member that has to fucking see that shit, right? Um, I was also staunchly opposed to the people who were like, lol, 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 stupid bitch, glad she died, etc. Right? Like, I recognized that she she was also somebody who fell down to an in, in, into an extremely yes, uh, socially isolating, yes. uh, controlled social environment uh, with all the QAnon and conspiracy theories and shit um so this is a position that i'm consistent with across all fucking cults like empathy for people who are affected by cults and cultic mind control like is something that's very important to me yeah um so to build off of that of what vivian was saying um i'm lar like almost i think we're really really on the same sync in this on this uh topic we're in sync on this but um there are you know this is hardly the only cult that uses tactics like this i mean um there has been significant documentation within scientology of um similar tactics like standing guard for 24 plus hours um being used to essentially ensure that not only do not only are people very isolated socially like from one another within the cult um uh, like every relationship has to be facilitated in these cults by uh hierarchical leaders so you don't even get to have relationships with other members yeah. of the cult without it going through that leader in many cases or a leader if they're in a case that's a little bit more distributed like I mean, part um, of taking somebody else's wife right like is is like it creates a divide between the uh between the husband and the wife um like it's it's meant to isolate individual members like partially from each other. Yeah. Uh, the people in Jim Jones' cult talked about how like you know uh, especially in the very early days before they moved to Guyana, uh, they didn't um, they didn't speak to the other cult members a lot, right? Yep. 
it was, very, it yeah, was yeah. very odd. And, but you're absolutely we, right. That, but I just want to say, sorry, um, what you were saying about other cults using this is actually like how we would define a cult or how cult researchers would define a cult um it's it's through like different models of mind control and like how much undue influence and coercion uh and and abuse is like placed upon the members of a cult is like whether or not we determine that you know something is sort of a relatively harmless religion or or an actual cultic group yeah. yeah, sure. So, like, the idea that cult members uh, are manipulated by the cults they're in, I don't think anybody who's ever, like, who knows what a cult is would, like, disagree with this. What I'm not clear on is how this contradicts anything that I was saying. Like, apparently, you're trying to, like, critique me and saying that, like, I had Vegas, some, like... Dude. That's what you said. You said they were. I a said cult it was a child raping breaker. cult, and it was. Well, and, well, and the tweet hold, hold that Demon, a the a tweet that Demon Mama speak. brought up. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Demon Mama literally brought up a tweet that was just me saying that if you don't support the government stopping this thing from happening, then you support this thing happening. The idea that you could somehow like warp this tweet into being some individualistic, moralistic like condemnation of every single person in a cult is like really, really strange to me. Um, so like I, I'm just still not clear oh, on like how okay. you're extrapolating. Okay, I can, I can, I can do this if i can have a second to actually re respond to a couple of things mm -hmm. like um first of all there's a couple of reasons why i brought this up and this um does actually all sort of tie together so first of all there was a number of of like I, i'm looking i'm just looking through your tweets here again and and you you were kind of going on about this for a long time and you were denouncing mm -hmm. quite a lot of people not just people who were yep. uh quote in your i mean you accused a lot of people of supposedly defending the branch davidians um and mm -hmm. um well I mean, yeah, Mel and, engaged and, in denial that there was rape, so yeah, I was. No, yeah. I didn't. And, 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 okay, and, okay. okay I don't, I don't care. Rape, listen, listen, listen. Please. <laughs> she did, but okay. Please. No, like, she didn't. My... You decided to interpret her fucking tweet that way because, like, everybody on fucking Twitter uh, and and most of the people in this her fucking circle when they're doing this debate Her tweet was take... responding to me, and I was claiming that there was... Okay, okay I don't care. I don't fucking care. Let me talk. I was there trying, trying to talk. Let me okay? talk, for fuck's sake. I know you, you want to, like, your tweets. Okay, listen. The fact of the matter is the reason why I brought this up and the reason why I think this... Yes, I brought up the tweets because I wanted to be clear about right now, people's okay. position Jesus fucking yes, I'm here. me too right. me too so i don't uh, know why you're taking it first what ahead. i'm trying to why explain here mind? is you like literally i was asked a question and i have not been able to give my answer i would like to give my answer okay here's the reason the reason why i've brought up tweets here is because first of all this did start from tweets there was a lot of tweets said and i want to be clear about people's positions here. and <laughs> me too so don't and, think about me doing and it. i would like to speak thank you um and the reason why I think these tweets are important is because I think that there is a problem that happens. And this has, in my opinion, in the extensive research that I have done, not only on Waco, but on many cults, um, there is a uh, problem in the discourse around cults that centers both around part one, what Vivian and I, and I were both talking about here, which is the fact that it, oftentimes the actual structure and function of cults is not understood at all which leads to demonization of individual members of the tr of the of the cult and that does not that leads to bad outcomes when it comes to how the yeah. how the government interacts with cults and this is a predominant idea that that proliferates through our society yeah, I mean, and it is based or, or, on uh, Shinrikyo, uh, like the leader was I, I the agree, leader was oh, hung, I agree, but hold on, I'd like to finish what I'm saying the fucking members and it's that yeah yes Sorry. but but it's fine it's yeah. it's so that's the first part and i really think that this this proliferates this idea proliferates up to the level to the top levels of government in how cults are actually handled in how they're looked at and how they're understood and they are approached often with a sledgehammer when they should be approached with a scalpel now the second part of this that um frustrates me is that there are very real very real and very legitimate concerns about how the atf and fbi conducted themselves in this and in previous situations and likely in future situations given that this has been a pattern throughout all of history um we have had Could have just arrested koresh while he was out running that's, like that's that, that is true they, they, they have arrest warrants for eight other members of the cult yes this wouldn't have okay solved the problem. we can we can argue seizure warrants okay, for the can, weapons we can so argue like, about well, the details once i'm done making my fucking segment there's a reason why i wanted to i wanted to really really want to get my point out because i think it makes a lot of sense and it can give us some progress so I would appreciate just, just a few more seconds to bear with me. The reason why I think it's really important that we address 
the fact that um that characterizing anybody who has any critiques of the government or who has significant critiques of the government's behavior as a child rapist apology which i i don't know you can go down and and, and drill down into the specifics but there's a lot of i mean there was a lot of broad condemnation of people um who had problems with correct. the fbi and i think no. that that excuse That's me incorrect. excuse me let me finish my statement for the love of god um um the and i think that can be a problem one of the reasons why um a lot of these movements and i believe that this is contributing to QAnon in the modern day um is is so broad is because there is no room in much of the american um discourse in general for seriously critiquing federal agencies that that do potentially horrible things and this is often this often operates because of the demonization and guilt by and this attempt at guilt by association of anybody who brings critique upon them or of the members of the group themselves that's why i think these things are important and i think it's why we need to be careful about how we talk about these things because as i stated their waco uh, radicalized a generation of far-right people and whether you feel that's fair or not doesn't matter we if you want to prevent the radicalization of of murderous and dangerous cults you have to take a serious look that yeah sometimes the government is going to have to be extra 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 careful and not doing that can actually play directly into the hands of people who are trying actively to radicalize people into far-right groups sure okay can i address that because like that was like to me directly okay so like sure. You said that you claim that I was engaging in saying that anybody who had any critiques of how the feds engaged in this situation were engaging in child uh, rape apologia. I absolutely never said that. I engaged in critiques of the feds' behaviors. I've done so publicly. I've said that a lot of the problem was that there was a lack of coordination between the negotiators and the tactical teams themselves. And additionally, uh, in the negotiation pro uh, process, the feds were way too aggressive in a lot of respects, which the feds... Uh, uh, literally updated their uh, guidelines and how to deal with these situations as a result of that. I've literally never said that defending or that critiquing the feds in any situation or in, in any way in this situation is um, child rape apologia. What I did say is that when you are denying that the fact that there was child rape at this compound, despite the fact that children from the compound have well, come right, out and said that there was. It, so we can move on, can't we? Instead of well, you okay, wait, 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 okay, wait, wait. Can, yeah. can I just like, can I just, okay, wait, can I just lay this out really quickly? Wait, you keep, you keep saying this stupid earlier. shit. Can I, I please? Shout. I can't fucking shout, so I'm just going to keep fucking talking, right? Because I tried to say this earlier, um, and and the problem is, right, in these fucking spaces and on Twitter, everybody, like, has a fucking idea in their head of who the other person is and what they fucking believe, right? And they will it, they will interpret absolutely every comment that they make, depending on whether or not this. they think the person is good or bad, right? I saw the exact same fucking tweet you did, right? And it was relatively ambiguous, um, but it definitely wasn't, like, a straight-up denial that child rape happened there all right likewise so i have what, one other thing so i'd like to um, well it, does, wait, it doesn't wait, matter wait. whether you're going okay. right because if two people can have two different interpretations no no no, no, no wait this is going to keep coming up fucking ways to interpret we, we, we need to we need so to deal with it just like give your sure, we need to, we're going to need to deal with this can i can i say what you should do in okay. that case is ask okay. the person what they mean by the tweet rather than going oh are you a child rape apologist it's fucking stupid i actually did that though can, can we let no nothing speak? No nothing's barely spoken, okay? No nothing, please. Go. I don't care. I, I, I think I asked Mel. I asked Mel like ten times. Okay, fine. It makes you sounded like you were denying child rape, but did child rape happen? Did child rape happen? I think I asked him like eight separate times. Why do you care? What? And her Why? response Why was you always to pivot that? and avoid answering the it's question. It's not a pivot. It's because it's what? a dumb. It's a dumb question. Like, why? It's obvious that it happened. Why do you need confirmation from okay, me? Wait, wait. Oh, like, thank why you. Why does it matter? Why does so it matter? You're you're it. Finally I owned up to now. No, okay, no. Wait, can I can just lay this out really quickly. Oh, like, okay. Okay. So, like, Vivian no, said, I like, I was unreasonably interpreting this because you were though. Because you guys have this like really weird bias. No, you guys have this like really weird bias. No, wait, wait. Let me. I told you. Be a bloodbath. I told you it'd be a bloodbath. Blood listen to you fucking no. I listened to both of you fucking ramble on about bullshit the entire fucking time, dude. Like I honestly, I don't. I, I I no. Actually, no. No, nothing has not talked that much. So no. Actually, we'll just we'll just make fun of Mal. It's fine. Look, dude. Sure. Like honestly, if you, I honestly, it doesn't really matter what I say 
because if I'm going to be asked like the same annoying question over and over and over again over some moralist platitude that like doesn't really matter, like my opinion on any sort of thing, especially like that, like that that stuff, like it doesn't matter. Like who cares? Like I like how this is the same response Richard Spencer gave okay. when asked if he denounced Hitler. That's just like kind of like a funny thing I noticed. That's if not, I, I don't know. Can I can I can I can why do you say that? No, 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 wait. What's the point of saying that? No, why would you say that? Like you know that I'm not. Like you know that I'm not a right winger. Why do you say this? I don't know that. When asking you, wait, wait, when asking you if. <laughs> you say that you don't know, you say that I don't know, or I know that you're not, like, going to, like, defend these things, when you will, like, repeatedly refuse to, like, answer questions after heavily Because you're, pu because you're publicly asking me over and over and over again on Twitter, and I then don't want to talk it to you about it, because I don't Jesus care. Christ. Why? Okay, okay, why? okay, hold on. Like, you, I, I have something I'd like to say here. Wait, 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 wait. The whole entire point of us bringing up these tweets, Demon Mama said herself that she wants to be clear on people's positions, okay? Yes. So if you want us to be, if you want us to have a productive conversation, and be clear on each other's positions. Maybe just answer questions when asked. I've already, I've okay, already but, talked. Okay, I've to already, be fair, already, to be okay, fair, you know to be fair, Mel question. literally just said on this panel right now. Obviously, it fucking happened. That it obviously yeah. fucking happened. So After whatever you I think. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold on no, a second. Wait. Why on Twitter? Just, why do you... Can you shut the fuck up, Mel? Thank you. I just really want to say something here. No, please. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> no. Okay, you oh literally God. keep talking over me whenever I try to get in. Like, come right. on. Please. Right, I haven't talked to. I haven't talked over you a single fucking you time until right now. You just did. Right. Right. Now. Arguing, you guys are. You guys are literally arguing. babies. Holy you're shit. Arguing, children. You're arguing about arguing now. Someone. Like, I know. The point they want to make. I just I want to say something. To speak. I want no doubt to speak for a little bit. At one some point. So right. Who's sure. speaking now? May I? Is that fine? Yes. Go. Okay. Yeah, fine. Go on. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> this entire thing. All. I mean. This panel started because of the twi discourse on Twitter and what I'm hoping that we can do is dispel this. Now, when I when now when Mal the Infidel says that Mel did not answer questions directly on Twitter, okay? All right. Well, we've sorted that part. Now, I would like to turn it to Mouthy and and hope hopefully we can acknowledge that there may be some flaws in Mouthy's way of communicating his position on this. For example, mm. this is a tweet that says the I think one of the tweets that started this off was uh Waco was justified three words Correct. um Waco was justified is a well, that's a fucking terrible that's, fucking that's a pretty tweet. I'm going to say that's a pretty easy to misinterpret tweet like right. um and then additionally um and what sense wait, wait, hold on hold on if you want me to answer that you'll have to let me explain mm -hmm. myself I know it's discourse I know um but the the uh so you have a tweet that's very very a very simplistic sort of hot take style tweet waco was justified well does that mean everything about waco was justified because it sure seems like that's what's being said when you follow up with all kinds of things like other statements that you made along here like the one i read earlier in which you stated that uh if you think the government's involvement was wrong well was wrong does that mean in part or in whole your statements are easily as as vague and i say this as somebody who no yeah i think that it's fair only to say you, that only if very selectively cut out you like also accused shoe of head on, for tweeting a meme you accused shoe of head of doing apologia i think i think that you're That's correct. i think what's happening here mouthy is that you're unwilling to mm -hmm. to acknowledge that perhaps you don't have god tier rhetoric on twitter and that perhaps people could misinterpret you now i would like to ask you so that we sure. can move on from twitter once and for all uh, just to be clear, do you believe that everything that happened at Waco was justified, as your original tweet would entail? I have Simple said question. Repeatedly. Answer the question. Said, Simple question. Said, no, uh, okay. no, no, yes or no? Know, do you believe everything uh, was justified? Said, yes or no? Just say no. Just say no. You, why, why are you being so weasel? You're pulling a mouth right now. Okay. Listen. Name my right. Name for me. Malfi and Fidel speak. Okay. Right. Malfi and Fidel, give your answer, and then we'll move on. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're pulling a mouth. Wow. This is a this is very positive uh, conversation. Let's let's try not to denigrate each other as much as that. Come on, Malfi and Fidel. Go. Yes, please go. Okay. Please do. So, um, yeah, I've said repeatedly that. Countless. I've said in this conversation, I demon ma. I know you have a really short memory span. That's fine. I've said repeatedly oh, yes. throughout this conversation that several of the ways that the ATF acted in was not justified. There were several strategic errors that the ATF made. I've been open that on that both on Twitter and in this conversation. So I don't know like why you're accusing me of not answering the question. Oh, I haven't um, seen that on like Twitter, very but that's fine. Easily like bad faith attempt to gotcha. I mean, you but, spent um, the entire thing yeah, accusing so... Mel of a lot of things. I don't so think it's fair. just strategic errors 
I mean, there's like, they literally just, they didn't enact the plan on paper. They didn't, um, they still went ahead with it when, when their plan had been kind of fucked right yeah, sure. ahead of time. There was like, there was a whole load of shit, but I also don't think, That's I think I did this error, chat though, before and I think that Dima Mummer alluded to it earlier. Um, I, I don't think even if they'd have done everything perfectly, I still think they would have fucked it up. Um, because of like their limited understanding of like how to deal uh, with with this kind of cult, um, and also because of like the cultural pressures that were on them at the time that Mel was talking about in her opener, oh. with sort of like you're coming towards the end of the satanic panic. There's like a shitload of stuff about uh, child abuse floating around, um, and the ATF would de- uh, sorry the FBI would definitely being pressured to deal with. It's all good, dangle that. Um, Yeah, I just. <laughs> I think they would have fucked up no matter well, what. Like, um, something that's they, interesting to know yeah, too is like, a job. Koresh, Koresh like knew when they were bugging, like bugging the compound. Yeah. Like, he knew they, they were bugging the compound. He knew yeah. who the uh, who the FBI the agent was who infiltrated the compound. No, nah, um, I was, just, I was he playing knew with them. Forty minutes ahead of time because some I fucking reporter had like got and asked for directions, uh, like that the ATF and the FBI were on their way. Um, they 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 didn't just fuck up they like colossally fucked up and it resulted in the deaths of the vast majority of people who were in the compound and yeah i don't like, know if anybody's were, disagreeing that there were a variety of things that were massively fucked up i don't think anyone's disagreeing with that uh, okay i just want to throw it over to know nothing and we're gonna let know nothing speak for a couple of minutes because i want to give him a shot okay no nothing please go yeah yeah. First, I I feel like the double standards being applied to Mouth the Infidel compared to Mel are kind of insane. Like his tweets were maybe a bit ambiguous, but to compare that to Mel, where like a reasonable observer could have like interpreted her tweets as denying the rape, uh, really? and her uh, refu- con- con- consistently refusing to answer mm-hmm. simple questions, comparing that to Mouth is insane. Mel Mel's yeah, optics are a lot worse, but let's put that behind us. Too. We we now have our answers. Now it's just like comparing those two is insane to me. No, um, as to, is, um, why do you guys care about like? Yeah. It is a valid point. Like I what? had, I said this to Mel earlier. Like I had a ding go off in my brain when I saw her fucking tweet. Like recently, um, it was like, uh, genocide bad with the bleedy face, and then fucking like Waco bad or whatever it was, like child abuse bad with the bleedy face, right? Um, and 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 I do kind of fucking get this. Like the constant fucking sea lining to like get people to um deny or disavow things. Um, because you have this preconceived notion of who they are and what they believe in your head, and you just want them to, like... Yeah, it's just... It's, it's really fucking obnoxious, and, like, if I was getting that, I'd probably tell you all to fuck okay, off. Okay, well. can I just, like... Can I... Okay, so <laughs> if you think that it's unreasonable... Okay, let me, like, again, just lay out what happened so that everybody is very clear on the situation here. I tweeted something claiming that there was child rape that was like the whole point of the tweet was like pointing out that there was child rape happening into the compound mel quote tweeted me said wikipedia though and showed a wikipedia screenshot where wikipedia was saying that like during the raid there was no child rape at the compound um that's not that, what the it seems to very said, by the way okay sure the Wiki... okay, what do you mean okay sure paragraph... that's not what it said the, no, the paragraph did, did not the say paragraph that. paragraph that you cite not have to do with the lack of existence of child rape in a certain situation? No, or did it, it didn't. It was just, it was a witness account that happened within the compound because the main legal ramification yeah, for where the, the, where rape, the witness well, no, was saying that there wasn't rape in this specific time right, frame. Right, right. And the Wikipedia, so I claimed that there was child rape. Watch you this. You quoted me, said Wikipedia, watch this. though, showing a screenshot that heavily implied that there wasn't child rape. And then when people that asked you, okay, imp- so can you clarify your position? It. You refused to didn't heavily imply it. This isn't no no no. This isn't unreasonably no, like no, no, expecting no. somebody to constantly answer so questions. What was the, this is somebody. What was this is asking somebody to clarify. Are you okay? Who refuses to clarify? Are you okay? 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 I'm doing okay. You just you just sound pretty upset over this over this like tweet thing. Don't we engage in seeing it from the left is pretty irritating to me. So I'm not a gorper. Hold on a second. I don't know what your problem is. If I could get something in here, I'm not I'm not like a right winger. Just for the record, I personally think tell what your positions are. You can't you won't clarify any of them. So how am I? I'm not a right winger. So like why would I? What do you mean? Like I'm literally a trans person and a communist. Why would I be a right winger? Like that's a that's a ridiculous. I'm not That's a ridiculous a assumption. But, when you're re- but you keep bringing it up, though. You're like, you're wow. like a right winger. Like, well, I'm not a right winger, though. I'm saying the rhetoric that you're in. We know you're not a right winger. 
Yeah. Chud, like, Chud, why do you care about Chud, so much? Chud, you should you, call this. You, you should call this episode "Oil Wrestling with Mel and Mouthy Infidel" because this is the slipperiest like, shit. It's both of you trying to weasel out of the fact that you both obviously were using inflammatory language about this event, no, no, no. and now you're trying to back it up. Listen, I'm sorry. If, if no, hold on a second. Now I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking now. You've had your fucking turn, my dude. Like both you've had your Everyone's turn. So it's mad. my turn. Listen, you're, if you, you have, if so you mad. drop a take like X a X universally recognized horrible event was justified period is extremely ridiculous and then you go on on a thing saying oh the, the vosh court is super mad about this stay mad die True. mad haters like that they is 100 percent. i'm sorry that is weasley <laughs> as motherfucking shit and everybody here and i'm sure the entire Clarify audience everybody several times. excuse me everybody no. in the world knows that no, that's a weasley no, thing no, however no. i am willing to say that for the purpose of, for the purpose excuse me let me finish my fucking sentence my dude i know a lot of like you seem you seem I'm very afraid of people them. talking besides yourself and i recognize that that, well, that no, can be a thing we're all streamers here we all love the, the I'm highlight in you know hearing if you can substantiate these stupid i mean i literally have read back your tweets and i think that it is not hard to say yeah. that just walking I mean, in walking into mean, a room and like declaring like excuse me so for angry. fuck's sake can we get a mute <laughs> okay. on this motherfucker because no, i'm just no, trying no, to have no. a sentence here everyone's just yelling i'm just trying to have a sentence and i keep getting interrupted it's very funny all i want to do is make my statement yeah, okay, right, okay. This is what we're going to do. Right, this is what we're going to do because I want, I want to move on. I want to talk because we're just going around in circles talking about this Twitter shit, okay? So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to just have a few more minutes, rub, you know, smoothing this all over, okay? Everyone can own their positions. And then we're going to talk about, we're going to go through it bit by bit. We're going to start off, we're going to talk about the warrant first of all. So, Dima Mama, make your statement, okay. any responses, and then we'll move on. Okay. I believe quite firmly that in general, uh, rhetoric such as walking into the, the Twitter, which is a public space, and shouting into the void, uh, X atrocity was justified, is basically precisely the type of shit that has led to the right wing being able to use incidents like Waco to endlessly... Uh, to endlessly point out, look, these fuckers will will they'll they'll stand by while the FBI kills twenty five children. And in addition, we haven't even gotten to touch on this because there's been so much like I don't know slipperiness measurement measurements between you and Mel in this conversation. But in this conversation, you've also accused, uh, you've also made statements such as the Branch Davidians started the fire, which is by the way a massively controversial statement that um no it's not yes it actually uh, is no, no it not. actually it's is controversial, it's not actually no, the branch yes, davidians, davidians started the fire like according mm, to several listen, listen, you, listen, listen, you can literally listen listen you can literally, you can literally I'm, sorry, I'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry it's my turn to talk right now i know you're all very angry but okay i, I recognize <laughs> that there is a i recognize that some people have come to that conclusion and other people have not by the way even the you can literally go you can literally go shut the fuck up you idiot that is the dumbest thing i've ever heard anyone let's, say let's, no it's really not no no this let me finish this please literally oh okay. hold on you just you're you're getting mad that i'm comparing you to mel but you just tried to compare this to holocaust now it's fucking idiotic and you know it is and everybody well, in the audience well, okay, knows wait, it is wait, wait, you no, fucking no, child no 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 your argument it's was happening. oh well some people thought it happened some people thought it didn't no, no. fucking shit That's you can literally you can literally, you can literally you can literally excuse me excuse me you can literally go you can literally go to the first paragraph of the wikipedia article about waco the wikipedia article, i recognize there. wait wait I vivian I vivian I vivian yeah. i would I like to this. talk you people are literal you children fucking minutes dude. i haven't you finished a sentence because you idiots you know keep interrupting me and it's actually you. embarrassing okay okay this is embarrassing much, this way. is so embarrassing i all, right. all i want to do I is agree. finish my thought Please. You, you finished. Like, I have literally not I've finished this single sentence done, because okay? all of you have literally interrupted me. Okay, here we go. Here, come the, here comes the baby crying. Please. So I have not finished my sentence yet. So I would like to finish Can I respond to this fire thing first? Here we go. I still haven't finished my sentence. No, no. Oh my god. Finish the sentence. Finish the sentence. Thank you. There is some there is a a considerable amount of controversy over this. I recognize that there is disagreement, mm -hmm. but even the Justice Department has not come to, co to a, a conclusion on this. And I think that it's important to be able to acknowledge these things without making pithy, re highly reductive statements like X was justified because it very easily, and I, I realize, Vivian, you can disagree with me on this, but I, I've done 
a lot of research on this, and I don't think that it's as easily as the, I don't believe it's conclusive. Even people like fucking okay. there's a I'm lot of people. What's that? There's a lot I of can I my a credible, in credible. If, listen, if credible, credible journalists your... have said this, and 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 <sighs> what I'm trying to say is I believe that this rhetoric, I believe this type, I believe this type of rhetoric, very. That I believe that yes, I can. I can cite Robert Evans right now as one who just talked about it recently. Okay, cool. Now, sure. okay, so but I'm not done. Oh presented? my god, oh, my dear god! Right. Okay, Emb no, embarrassing. I feel, I feel... Right, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, we're not getting anywhere with this. Everyone's talking over each other. What I want to do is let's bring it back. I feel like to the best of our ability, we've dealt with the Twitter drama. Okay, now I'd like okay. to talk about uh... this through the three stages that people tend to have disagreements on. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about the warrant. We're going to talk about the siege. And we're going to talk about the compound raid, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can go over each part, and it's we can all get our thoughts and perspectives out, and disagree and agree, and whatever. It's because they're we want afraid of me. So can can we address Sorry. the fire thing as well? Like I think that's I a really just, important. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, that, no, that, no, can be, no. that can be in the compound raid. That, that'll be the sure, compound sure. raid. Okay. The, 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 I, I don't know. It's just frustrating to like leave that fucking hanging there when yeah, really like, frustrating. probably there's not going to be the same people who are in the chat now who will be here later. Okay, okay, okay. that's a fair point. This is this what we do then? Let's get the fire stuff out of the way now we'll, we'll do it it'll be like a, it'll be like a quentin tarantino film okay it won't be chronological but it'll be fucking very avant-garde okay so <laughs> let's talk about the fire right We're sure yeah the so the davidians the, the davidians had like lamp fuel um like petroleum that they were using for uh lamps and for like heating and shit um and there are like multiple witness statements from like uh from survivors right people who survived the uh, the fire including uh graham fuck i forget his full name graham whatever it's in my source list um that i posted in the discord part of this conversation uh who still remains to this day a staunch supporter of david koresh and believes that he was the son of god uh who states that the fire was um started by the branch civilians uh there's also the um fucking uh the the report to the attorney general the danforth report which also concludes the same so like both sides kind of agree there's the the controversy around like who started the fire um there are a couple of branch divisions who do, who dispute it um but overwhelmingly it comes from basically conspiracists right and yeah. the justice sure. department wait, wait can i can i wait can i say this like additionally not only does like f do former branch divisions corroborate this that the branch divisions started the fire but there was literally arsonist reports showing that the fire started in three different areas simultaneously which concluded that it must have been like an inside thing that started the fire mm -hmm. additionally the grenades that were thrown into the compound that um branch divisions say started the fire were fired in um according to this same report like four hours before the fire started and the people who did the report concluded that there was no way that the government actually started this fire like this is isn't a very like controversial thing demon mama if you have controversial evidence uh i would like to hear it but my assumption is that you really haven't done any research and are just like saying it's uh, controversial yes, because sure. wikipedia said so no so what's uh, your evidence no there's there's I've, I've watched quite a bit of stuff and not only that but there was a justice report there was a justice department report i believe in 2001 that went over this and 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 parsed through the evidence in a court of law and was not able to conclude that um that the that there was evidence for the branch davidians um having set the fire themselves now i I don't know. I believe it's Wait, certainly. I'm reading I, that the justice report literally says that they that that the sec members did start the fire. That was the conclusion oh of that God. justice report. Oh well, perhaps I'm misciting it then. Perhaps that one is is incorrect. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, it seems like you are. It's possible. I mean, uh, but again, the point. Can the, you um the, the reason? Can you give me a link to that to that justice report? Yeah, I, I would love to see it. Yeah, I mean, I would I love to see yeah, more I, of it. I, I mean, I but like the the 2000s and the 96 and all the, also 2000 is the one that I thought was just, just going to assume Mike can. I'm just going to assume my assumption that you haven't I'm done it. Okay, well, correct, nobody cares. The research, nobody fucking the research cares about what you have to say right was, now. I've watched stuff and no, then no, no, you missed No, no, no. Listen, excuse me. I've done quite I've but done okay. quite a lot of research on this. Like I, like this is not you the, with the wait, wait, DOJ be, report. This is done. this is the type of shit that I'm talking about though. This is the type mm -hmm. of attitude of of some of a fucking literal child who can walk into a room and declare, "Oh, not Waco was justified." And then when people have concerns about certain aspects of it that You don't have any concerns. Wait, I literally no, I literally DOJ report. Okay. 
like that's your only concern uh, no you that's literally not my only concern that was one of many yeah, that was asserted as fact that, one. One. that are asserted as fact all right stop fucking bickering i mean wait this is what happens i've literally i literally never even got to finish the previous sentence and then i get interrupted by somebody who's gonna make who's gonna try and pretend like they're 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 the the high high-end good faith actor in this conversation when they come in and say waco was justified on twitter ha 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 okay, take. Okay, nuclear hot take guys can i address that can i address that because you keep bringing this up so generally yeah, there are two yeah, major points of, so generally there are two yeah, main uh, points what, of sorry what are you saying there? the waco stuff are you are you gonna wait are you saying something okay all right come on can i set my oh, come on this is childish as shit come on let's okay, set my cool. Okay, so there are two main points of contention with regards to the Waco stuff. One, people contend, did the government really have a place being involved here at all? Um, was the search warrant justified? Two, there's the question of who started the fire. These are the main points of contention. So basically, when I said, and I clarified this under the tweet, Bastia even asked me, what do you mean when you say justified? And I immediately clarified it, unlike other people who you're trying to compare me to, um, when called out on their takes. So I immediately clarified what I was saying, and that I was saying, A, the Branch Davidians started the fire, and B, the initial uh, involvement of the government was justified. And I've been incredibly clear that the government fucked up in a variety of ways. So um, you can say that like this tweet in and of itself, when removed from all other context and all other clarification that I've been giving for days, was like, uh, I guess, like bad rhetoric or like uh, pretty vague. I guess that's fair, sure. But mm -hmm. to like compare that to like other people who are like not only heavily implying something, but then refusing to give their answer on what they were implying like that just seems like a little bit silly to me um okay. if you really if you if you're so concerned with digging through my old tweets then not at least then why not at least dig through the tweets i mean these are literally right, relevant repeatedly... tweets and i don't see sure. any single sure. clarification are, tweet so on your timeline it could be tweets. literally we replied were, we to bastia we were on the, the tweets don't matter we were on the fucking fire we were talking about the fire okay demon mama cited a particular fucking report no nothing claims uh linked you linked the Danforth report. Um, uh, no, nothing. You linked a CNN article about the Danforth report. Was it the Danforth report that you're referring to, or is there another report in 2001 that you're claiming had different conclusions to the Danforth report? Are you asking me, or are you asking no, nothing? I, I'm asking you because you're oh, the one yeah. who said uh, that. I, I think I, 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 I will. I, I believe I miscited this, so I apologize about that. About that report, okay. and that is a miscitation on my part. All but, right. So, pretty much, pretty much a given that the Davidians started the fire. Fantastic. Where are we going to go now? Search warrant. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I was thinking we could. You know, we'll go <laughs> well, back well, to the wait, wait, wait. There was one um, more thing I wanted to say on that before we moved on, which uh, is okay, sure, okay, which is on. yeah, like which is that. In this this exact report, sorry, I do apologize. I I, I misstated the conclusion, but I do want to state that um, the Justice Department did conclude that incendiary tear gas canisters were used in this situation, which was one of the major concerns. Yeah. So, though I agree that um, I missed, couldn't have excuse, the shut fire up. because the fire started four hours later. Are you serious? Later. Are you serious right now? Right. This is a joke. Why are we, uh, Holy shit! Finish, Dima, 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 finish your point, and then anyone can respond. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay. Dima, uh, what one of the main concerns that that critics of the FBI and the ATF brought up. And I don't mean just right-wing critics, by the way. A lot of critics brought up that the, the incendiary tear gas canisters were used, which was heavily, which was denied, and and there was a shit ton of controversy over this. So yes, I had acknowledge. I'm sorry. I, have I, you, excuse me. Excuse me. Have you ever, have you ever like been to a protest or anything, and like had like seen tear gas can, like what kind of tear gas canisters aren't incendiary i don't think i've ever seen well, there's any. there's two kinds Wait. so there's yeah, like a hyper you. compressed there's like a hyper compressed tear gas canister which is like usually used um i don't remember how it how, how it ignites but it's not like the ones that they mm. use for crowds it's usually used for like inside of flushing out for buildings and All because right. of the force that cut the for because of the force and how they're designed like they can potentially be sparked by really anything because they're just volatile um because there's just literally no every air gas canister i've ever seen would like fucking burn your hand okay. off if you tried um, to can I, can literally I, hold on i can cite this i can cite this for you oh my god this both was a double interruption of my point and now i would like to be able to say what i was trying to say there is literally right I, 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 like literally i could I have a i have a citation for this the fbi claimed mm -hmm. that they use non-incendiary tear gas canisters on multiple occasions this was later confirmed and i i recall and i, I again i i apologize openly for misciting the conclusion but this was what I was remembering, and I can cite this uh, right here. I wasn't here. trying to get the, a dunk on you, Dina I know, Mama. I know, I know, I know, but, like but there's a, there's a I know, but the interruptions, are make, the interruptions are making it so I can't actually make my point. My point is not that that the, the who was at fault in this situation. It's the fact that there, that there has been 
over the course of years a lot of of denial and and misinformation and there is legitimate concerns that ra that rational people not just fucking branch davidian apologists have and i think that this is getting lost in the interruptions but the, the the FBI claimed on multiple occasions they were using non-incendiary tear gas rounds. This was later confirmed to not be true. They did use incendiary tear gas rounds, which for many mm -hmm. people who were claiming that was the case, confirmed as 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 a uh, as proof that the government was lying to them further. And this is how these things these things this is part of the problem that yeah. people become that's, validated that's, that's what's really really frustrating about the entirety of waco and why it's so persistent thank is you because like a lot of conspiracy theories there's like uh there's like these kernels of truth and there's these there are lies told about these situations or there are things that get confused um uh the the whole um uh, they're shooting us from the choppers thing, right? Is a really, really good example because there's like that uh, the phone call um, that I think the negotiator has with Koresh, where Koresh is just like, "You're a fucking liar, dude." They're shooting at us from the choppers, uh, and the the negotiator doesn't have the information available to him to tell uh, to to be able to tell Koresh that like the people in the choppers are armed only with like nine millimeter pistols and like well out of effective range um, okay. for those weapons, right? Can I... um, there's to this day because of, uh, was it Waco, the big lie and the second one as well, um, The uh, more the second one than the first one, I think, uh, the, the myth is pervasive that they had fucking mounted machine guns and were like firing down into the compound. Um, and that's all based off of like, one person basically having having that conversation with Koresh and not having the correct information right. to give him at the time. Uh, and, and, and that's Wait, my, that I, was yeah, my point. Really quickly, that was my I, point. I addressed the canister thing. Because while it's true that the government did deny the usage of pyrotechnic canisters, and then a later report found out that there was the usage of pyrotechnic canisters, this is irrelevant as to whether or not the fire was started by the government, because one, the ones that were used were deployed nearly four hours before the fire started, making it impossible for them no. to have been the cause. Two, the fire began in three places indoors simultaneously, which an independent arsonist investigation found meant that the fire was not uh, started by the government. And three, these canisters weren't even fired directly into the building. So while well, what that, you're that saying has is nothing true, to do with my argument. So while well, it well you you're missing the point of my argument. Up, you literally brought up this conclusion in support of the idea that there's controversy over whether or not the government started the fire. This is absolutely like this does not follow. This is not evidence. Wait, of what you're I brought this up as a as a as a matter of people being dismissed outright as kooks for having any questions about the scenario. This is all my. I, has nothing excuse to me. Do. I, oh my god. Uh, every can we stop trying to get dunks here because we're like I'm not, actually I'm not trying I'm really actually I've not I'm I've not been to trying to get dunks at all I've been trying to bring out the point no, that no not not you yeah. demon mama I was talking about infidel because like because no, like I'm not trying to get dunks I'm holding people to their positions you said there was controversy really over my position started the fire and you brought up this no I'm saying that there has been a, a ridiculous amount of an, an employment of a very 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 confident and I would argue um inflammatory interestingly um uh rhetoric that leads to the exact problems that i am most concerned with in this situation i i have no doubt that that david koresh and his cult were a a hugely problematic organization that something had to be addressed that they had to be dealt with to some mm. degree um but the way that that was done the response of the government is they are the most at the end of the day the government the federal government has to be held to a higher standard than random citizens and we have to be willing to acknowledge that if you dismiss legitimate criticism or legitimate concerns as uh as a uh, 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 apologia which I believe was what happened and it has happened by the way not just you but in, in the greater discourse this happens all the time um that that is that leads to a an environment in which people uh extremism festers and we have a huge problem with extremism to this day because when you have the federal when you have the feds who obviously knew whether they deployed incendiary uh, grenades or not refusing to acknowledge that which you have we've corroborated on i've corrected my miscitation of that particular study and everything's been sorted out well, because the be point fair, was nothing corrected it but go for it yeah but wait that's what? we can keep going what does that even mean keep, keep going keep okay going. um yeah the, the 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 fact of the matter is that this is something that was not true this was a, a an attempt at whitewashing or or hiding the actions that actually unfolded and it, and that can cause 
a con a massive amount of confirmation which i think both vivian and i will agree on that these sorts of behaviors and this lack of transparency by the government can lead to many of the very people who are trying who are the targets of of extremist rhetoric concluding that they were correct in assuming all of the conspiracy involved and we have to hold the government to a higher standard because they're the government true i agree i'm glad your new argument is much more defensible you're an I, idiot. okay right you're no, an idiot that's it Let, okay, okay. okay so it's not Let, about shitting on demon mama can, can, oh sorry we, go ahead i was just gonna oh, say you literal know. moron uh, no, it's about shitting on no nothing, okay? No, I'm just kidding. No nothing's barely spoken this fan. I feel bad for him. Um, okay, listen, listen. I'm moving. Right, let's let's bring it, let's bring it back a bit, okay? So what I want to do, we're doing the Quentin Tarantino thing, okay? So we've done the third act. Let's go back to the first act, okay? <laughs> so what I want to talk about now, and this is something that um I've seen contentious discourse about. I don't know my own position on it, um, because there's a lot of reading to do, and I don't like reading. Um, but what do we think about the warrant? So it tends to be favorite man it was the warrant legal was it justified things like that so i'm going to throw it out to know nothing first and then mel hasn't spoken for a little while so know nothing i want you to give your perspective on the warrant and the mel response and then we'll go back to open conversation um just before uh the warrant is available in the source list that i posted by the way uh you can find that in the uh, top it? section um Sorry, I posted it in uh, oh. i tagged all of you like prior to this oh no i, um, I know what you're talking about okay. now yeah, it's in stream chat um, in the Google Doc. I also posted the Google Doc in chat for anybody who's in chat who also wants to have a look at the search warrant. Um, it's just at the top there, Mount Carmel search warrant. Okay. No, nothing. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm no expert on this warrant. Um, that's not my expertise or anything, but um, it seems like my understanding is that when they added the... Um, meth lab as part of the warrant that seems like it's very sketchy and based off of less like legit information um but in general they were violating laws with the guns and an ammunition and um i think the federal government has a right to do a search warrant when it believes that's the case so mm -hmm. i think it probably was justified to uh, do that the evidence for the meth lab was so like it was basically nothing the evidence was that there used to be a meth lab on the property that i think koresh had actually reported and asked um uh either the fbi or the local police to clear out um and that one of the davidians had like a previous conviction for meth use uh for possession i, I i'm pretty sure that's like just about all they based it on but they wanted to have that so that they could have military support for the raid um because if they could prove that the that waco was a not prove if they could allege that waco was a drug nexus they could get military support for the raid um and i i yeah i think that's why they did it well they also um they also knew that they had to do higher um jurisdiction above the local and like state law enforcement because at the time, like, there was no state involvement. Uh, like, I don't think the state was, like, technically allowed to do anything at the time. And I know, like, the local sheriff's office and several of the officers were in Koresh's pocket. Like, they actually were, like, helping him throughout the whole ordeal, like, even the hostage situation. Um, it wasn't until the ATF took over the negotiations from the local law enforcement where, like, things sort of got to one south. So, yeah. Please, like, do you much... need to stop posting fucking Waco the big lie in chat? This is literally like the worst, most conspiracy ridden fucking documentary on Waco. If you have, I'm sorry. Right, it's yeah, just like, like a lot true. of misinformation going know. around in chat. Waco the Big Lie and Waco the Big Lie 2 are not to be fucking trusted as reliable fucking sources whatsoever. I can't go into it right now, but if you want to have a fucking talk about, about them with me in future, I'm glad to tell you why they're bullshit. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't know. I was just elaborating that, like, yeah, like, I mean, there was. <sighs> The jurisdiction has to go higher than like what is already existent like in terms of the state apparatus so i mean yeah i mean they were they had like uh what was it like they had post no nexus hub so far everyone's either the 90s penalty. or the 80s assault weapons firearms ban i can't remember but they basically just had like unregistered um era 15 lowers um and like kits that were that were stripped and able to um basically make weapons fire like full automatic and that was the big contention right was they just they were like oh these people are just assembling machine guns and the fbi and the federal government has had a lot of whiplash from i don't know if this was before or after the um north hollywood shootout where a bunch of uh, bank robbers like used fully automatic firearms and like that was like sort of like the creation of like swat and all that so 
I don't know. That's like kind of another reason why too was like Waco was the culmination of like so many different policies, um, uh, bureaucratic movements and social movements and culture and shit. Like it was a really significant event in history, which is why a lot of the stuff culminates. Right. I think okay. that um yeah. Okay. Oh, Oh. No, just open up. Good moment. We'll go ahead, jump in, and then we'll go from there. Oh, yeah. I was, I was just gonna say, like, uh, I, I think it's really, I find it very difficult to sort through, um, every bit of of the of the the uh arrest arrest warrants that were serviced. I think that's pretty tough to justify, but I think there's reason there's reason to believe that they had every you know every reason to begin looking into this, especially given that there was you know weapons being stockpiled um but i do i do tend to agree with something that vivian brought up at the beginning which is that um given that this was like a cult that there had been some research done on and maybe this is a limitation of the time but nonetheless um there could have been this could have been handled in a lot of different ways it, like for example not trying to arrest each individual at the compound where they believed the uh arms were being stored to me that seems like a decision that probably would fall on the shoulders of uh whoever built and organized the operations because uh the serving of the initial uh of the initial arrest war warrants ended started the shootout if i'm not mistaken um and that's that's pretty dangerous to send your your agents in to a facility that you know is populated with people who could be stockpiling um automatic like automatic weapons which was the initial reports were that there was um there had been the sounds of uh of of automatic weapon fire coming from the ranch being reported by people in the area and if that's the case it seems relatively risky to just send agents to the front door to try and arrest the leader of, the, of a cult that you know is a cult especially when you also know about that cult which i believe um there's plenty of evidence to show that they knew the structure of the cult that this person is a messiah um now it might sound ridiculous to everyone that you would need to take their beliefs into account but as it turns out you actually have to take beliefs into account because if you try to arrest the messiah of a of a cult um it can be quite it can become a quite dangerous affair so i think there may have been some issues in the strategy that was used um in how they wanted to go about doing the arrests um and obviously i think there have been some changes over time to that um but nonetheless i think that the uh that that disregard or, or the lack of seriousness given to that portion of it um, is is worthy of some level of critique. Okay, everyone is. Does everyone agree? Have we agreed on the oh, war? Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Sorry, I, I mean, the war. I, think, uh, um, I mean, the war. Yeah, seems no, pretty I, simple. Like, sorry. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> I, there were a couple of things that my mom said that kind of stuck out to me. Um, I think, uh, so you said uh, that they knew a lot, like, there's, there's um, uh, there was actually like a whole congressional report into um, how, how poor their investigation was prior to um, formulating their plan uh, to take, uh, to, to execute the search warrant in Waco. Um, one of the major things that I said earlier, I think, was like they could have arrested Crash while he was out running, right? But like um, in the immediate inquiry afterwards, they said, you know, we didn't uh, consider that as part of the plan because we thought that Crash was basically uh, bound to the compound. Um, but they had uh, they had a a they had a person who had infiltrated the the compound who would have been able to tell them that like David Crash was like an avid runner and went out running every day, pretty. Much much right um so there was like all these breakdowns in communication and all these failures to gather intelligence and really just super super lazy research done by the um uh by the fbi and atf uh mm -hmm. prior to it that meant that, that that you know this all went down the way that it did um and i th i i do advocate like ad arresting koresh outside of the compound as a strategy um because although mouthy infidel rightly points out that there are other people who needed to be arrested uh and also uh one of the main excuses was like even if we arrest koresh outside of the compound we still have to execute the search warrant on the compound right mm -hmm. um 
I think that removing the leader from that situation uh, means that it's much easier to sort of like, uh, it's much easier to negotiate with the cult members who are currently there. It's much easier to keep it like from being nonviolent and so on. And it also sticks a massive fucking uh, spanner in the works of one of um, Koresh's main prophecies, which was uh, that there was going to be like a massive showdown um, with government forces and that he would die during the fight. And if they can just prove that they have him incarcerated and he's not going to be part of any fight in the near future, uh, that can also help defuse the situation. So a better knowledge of what the uh, what the cult believed, what Koresh was saying, and what Koresh's activities were um, would have been really fucking important uh, to to do the investigation. And then that shit would have been included in the search warrant, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so like, I, I don't think I've given it my take on this yet. I, I think this is like the le- the one of the least contentious parts. Like, I think that the search warrant, they thought they had illegal guns, so they got a search warrant. Turns out they did. Like, seems like a pretty justified search warrant. The way that they executed the search warrant was lacking in a lot of ways. That like, I think the ATF massively Malthy fucked a, up in a variety of different ways. Um, I sort of agree with um, Vivian's point that maybe they could have just like arrested uh, David Koresh as he was like out running. I'm not sure if that would have had that much of an impact. It feels like a lot of cults are so like, even when things happen that like massively destroy like your narrative, it seems like there's always going to be this cognitive dissonance. So I'm not, sh- I don't, mm. I'm not that confident. That but without the like... leader there, there isn't the authoritative I... control. Yeah, yeah, no day, like, he was, he was, so, yeah, he sure. was so central to this group of people that if Koresh was just like, moved away from the town like if he wasn't getting embedded in the town that he that mark uh that mount carmel was next to or if they caught him like they watched him jog like every single day and they knew that he was armed when he went out there like the feds like they had standoffs like every time david crush would go out there and walk like he would have an escort or people would have guns so like they they knew that all these things were happening like it's just mm-hmm. they had chances and they never took them and like i think that's the misunderstanding with cults and secret society kind of stuff is like most time the government just views like the interpretation of all the cult members is everything that the leader is and so they have to like find a way to get all of them and pretty much in almost every single standoff with a religious sect um like even outside of the united states like even like japan and stuff like if you don't remove the leader from the situation um whether it's through um violence whether it's through legal uh, means like they're just going to you know they're they're just gonna stay and like some some of them do like uh what is it like om shinrikyo um like from japan uh they mm-hmm. were responsible for like that sarin gas thing like the well, om shinrikyo like... and now aleph um without their leader they like morphed into aleph openly right. they kind of like disavow a lot of the shit that went on and they definitely haven't managed to get together and start making like chemical weapons again uh, like they did under Shoko Asahara. So, like, the removal of the cult leaders definitely taken some of the steam out of them. Um, right. For like, sure. could, could they have the potential to do, like, harm again? Like, maybe, but, like, it's pretty unlikely without that sort of, like, push. Oh, like they that. did continue to do harm after Shoko Asahara was arrested. Oh, did but, they? Like, oh, okay. um, but, yeah, just not, like, organizational on the same scale of being able to, like, um, produce yeah, sarin. I mean. They actually yeah. tried to, like, make nuclear weapons. Um, but that kind of failed. <laughs> I mean, Scientology is an example of a cult that was able to continue past um, the initial founder and central. They had a successor, but right? It, yes, yeah. but they had a successor. Had a new... I mean, technically, yeah. um, David Koresh is like a successor anyway, because he had that um, he had that whole fight with the other dude who was they were supposed to take over the branch Davidians. They had a fucking gunfight, yeah. and uh, he ended up. The other guy ended up going to jail. Koresh got off free but the davidians go right back to like they're like a splinter group of the millerites millerites yeah um which had like previous prediction that the earth the world was going to end in i think it was 1844 and literally set off like a period known as the great disappointment when everybody was just like yeah we sold all our shit and got ready for the end of the uh the world and it didn't happen right. uh and and members of the and millerites ended up getting like beaten up and assaulted and all this well, sort of stuff because there's a lot of there's a sign side- Note, but yeah the uh the seventh the seventh day adventists who were um the the so the seventh day adventists predated the branch davidians the branch davidians split off of the seventh day adventists claiming that the, the seventh day adventists yeah. were the dead 
the dead branch and you would go to the living branch aka the branch davidians um and yeah the seventh day adventists are still are a totally different organization than what they once were um but mm. like they're seventh branch davidians mostly i had an interview with one of their um pastors who seems to be a little bit koreshi which is kind of spooky actually yeah um, yeah, but, I, I, they, but I, they at least disavow all the shit that went down in the compound. Yeah, and, and I think I think this is something that like uh, again the reason why I think it's relevant to discuss these types of things with regard to cults um, is be I I think that people need to learn a lot more about them. I think that America as a whole is I mean we're a country of perpetual cults. We have had so many cults formulate formulate here, and our country seems uniquely vulnerable or per maybe not uniquely vulnerable but very vulnerable regardless um to the formation of of extremist often right-wing cults um and uh it, it it is concerning i mean again in this case the the result was 76 deaths in in a, in a facility mostly i mean but obviously david crash himself died but most of those people were victims of the cult the victims of the were children yeah 25 were children I, I don't think that we can take like i don't think you can take like the the how these things unfold lightly nor can we like sort of brush off the failures to apprehend and isolate the leader from the rest of the cult um I, and i also think i do i do tend to agree that that um you know had had the uh the federal officials been able to separate uh david koresh from the from the cult that would have that would have probably changed the entire outcome it is incredibly difficult to um like when you if you look at the history of many cults like uh, one that i pull on again is scientology as an example of one that had a succession from one extremist leader to another um with david Mis Mis miscavige i always mispronounce his name miscavige whatever miscavige, his name yeah, yeah. miscavige yeah D uh miscavige um took over from l ron hubbard but that took a, a long time there was like a period of like five six years after l ron hubbard's death where there was internal strife within the church um and it it was a church that was systemized and 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 uh <clears throat> hierarchical in such a way that there was a there was a um a feasible way for the power to be passed into the hands of um of uh miscavige and and of course even then there were uh, there was a loss to a lot of members of the church who left um and those sorts of things shouldn't be discounted as being very valuable in the deconstruction of dangerous cults like this because again if if you're if if we are if the goal is to stop the harm of innocence and stop the victimization of the people involved in the cults we you have to be more careful than just you know potentially doing a siege it, it's just a sad fact well, something that was oh, yeah. part of the speech that um, I don't know if anyone touched was like the unending amount of like psychological warfare that they did. So like they hooked up speakers and lights and <laughs> like sound systems and they basically yeah. just like played like really um, abrasive noise um, to basically 24 seven so they couldn't sleep. They basically sleep deprived them. Um, and like none of them broke from that compound. Like, like at the height of the um like psychological warfare that the feds were using like before things started to get more violent like none of them broke like He's back. these people were insanely dedicated to david crash like and um i the the atf did like negotiate like 19 kids out so that's not like necessarily true i mean but it doesn't like yeah but still though like the fact that like 19 kids is not the entire compound like Still, yeah, of course, like, didn't get everyone out. Sure, right, but like that's the problem. It's like you're, you're like there were people that already the people that left, like like the people that that did run to the like FBI and that were reporting um the abuses in the initial like months up before the raid, like they were kind of dismissed and laughed at. It wasn't until people got to Mount Carmel and they started releasing more hostages when people realized, oh shit, this is actually really bad. Like they kind of just like waved this whole thing off for a really long time. Like there was at least a couple weeks before anything even happens. Like that's my like that's my issue. Is like if victims leave a cult and say, "Hey, um, this guy is abusing us," and like nothing happens, like that just shows like perfectly like what Demon Mom and what um like um what Viv were saying earlier about how like we don't believe victims, we don't believe scenarios unless there has to be probable cause, and that's like why like and that's why I find it really particularly interesting that it was a weapons warrant um and not like child predation because there was plenty of evidence at the time to like link those things um like um, the marriage ceremony like, child predation didn't 
didn't play a particularly huge part in i'm just saying um, there was I'm there was surprised. there was like I'm... a couple affidavits where former members of the cult were like saying like yeah david koresh was like raping like minors but um there wasn't like substantial enough evidence i think so it didn't play a huge role in uh, well, why the government how, initially went in there but the, all i'm saying is like that's how we just treat like abuse victims in general like sure. it's yeah. like because we because like they don't understand that like cults operate on the um idea of abuse they just they have to see they have to see violence from these people in order to know that violence is okay and this was largely applied to almost every single group right so like the black panthers could stand outside like a, an area with guns or whatever but like they're not going to trust like the federal government's not going to trust them because they have guns so they're going to wait until there's an opportune time where they can do things and that's like why there were assassinations of the panthers and like numerous other groups like the the state gets to decide like in what ways violence is inflicted on other people depending on like how much they know and like usually that has to be violence so like that's why the atf forum was specifically about firearms over kids is because they needed a really good excuse to, to do the things they wanted to do um, well i I'm think not, a lot of the reason was they just they had more substantive evidence of the guns than they did have for the child rape um so i think just, like with the child rape it was literally just like affidavits um but they just flat out ignored it, though. Like, that's my point, is they flat out ignored it. Like, it wasn't um, even the fact that it was, like, evidence or not. Like, you, they just ignored, like, the cries of kids and just, like, let a bunch also, of other kids die in the process. Like, I, I mentioned earlier one of the, like, seminal pieces of reporting on the um, Branch Davidian uh, cult, um, the, uh, the Sinful Messiah, which was, like, this series of three articles published in the Waco Tribune. Uh, these were published, like, after the siege, uh, or maybe during the siege, I forget. But it, sent, it was definitely after the um, FBI rolled in, like, at the start, because the, the whole reason the fucking siege was... Uh, like Koresh knew about the siege um was because one of the one of the journalists who already knew that the siege was coming right was asking for directions to Waco and accidentally told like was it fucking it was like the brother of somebody in the compound or some shit I don't know yeah, um, but yeah. <laughs> I've got all the information in my brain but it's not coming out anyway um <laughs> the yes, point he is did like, say that so they asking. told uh, they told the Waco Tribune, and they told the uh, you know the, new, the the newspapers that they were going to be doing the siege, uh, or they were going to be uh, trying to execute this warrant rather, um, in order to stop them from publishing this series of articles, which which made a lot of the allegations of child abuse public. So that's just fucking weird. Okay. Right? <clears throat> Okay, so um, I think um, what we can do then, if we move on to the next, unless anyone's got anything else to any other points or any other points of discussion on that, not in this particular. Um, one, no, I, I think I think pretty much everyone's like in more or less agreement. So, Wait, okay, God. so let's move on. Let's move on to the siege now. Um, so obviously, following um, the uh, raid, um, obviously, um, well, in fact, we talked about the Mormon, but we didn't really talk about the gunfire. So I guess we'll talk about the gunfight that occurred as a result of the warrant trying to be served, and then we'll talk about the raid from the back of that. So um, what do we think about, you know, the actual gunfight coming the exact date, the gunfight that occurred that led to the siege? What are our thoughts on that? Um, I mean, I think in part uh, you can you can sort of say that the ATF is like somewhat culpable in the situation because they decided to go through with executing the search warrant after the cult had already been tipped off. So like that was like kind of a dumb thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but from like I, I think there's a lot of like dispute. Well, there, I, I should say dispute. There isn't much evidence with regards to like who fired the first gunshot. What I'm aware of is like there were like a few on the ground reporters who were there uh, and all of them testified. Uh, in court that they believed that the Branch Davidians fired the first shot, but ultimately it's like that's eyewitness testimony, like that's all there is. Um, so um, it's not really I think the prevailing theory is something like, um, because the, the, there was like a oh shit, there was like an FBI guy who said that he thought that the um, the first shots probably came from the dog team who were there to deal with the uh, Davidians dogs. So it might have been that they ended up like shooting one of the dogs or whatever and those were the first shots heard and then everybody just went went fucking haywire. Um, yeah, that, I wouldn't be surprised to find that's the case, honestly. Yeah, um, I've seen that as well um, and, and read, read that as well, that there was uh, there could have been either 
confusion or outright aggression um, over the 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 ATF. I think it was the ATF's dog team that was mm -hmm. sent in to clear out dogs at the facility. And um, I mean, and like they that's were volatile. already, they were already, they were at the windows. They had their fucking guns and shit. They were forewarned like forty minutes beforehand. Um, yeah, so like they were ready for a, for a shootout. It's just like. We don't really know. He said well, they even had the helicopter fly over. Um, there was like a conflicting report that I read somewhere that says that like the dog team went in when they were flying the helicopter because they figured, oh wait, they're not gonna hear us go in here because we're flying a big stupid fucking helicopter over their compound. Like I don't know, it's just everything that they tried to oh, do. Wait, to and, um, because two of the helicopters had to fucking land because they were getting shot at. So I'm yeah, not sure. Well, right, the well, helicopters I arrived I, I at the same time as the cars. They were supposed to arrive beforehand to get them looking over the other side of the compound. So that was also like a miss, uh, um, like mistimed thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do know, yeah. I and I know one of the helicopters, like, it, I know things got particularly bad because, like, David, one of, one of David Koresh's wife, like, uh, like, ran up to, like, a top, like, a top bedroom. Like, even, uh, there's, like, a documentary, I don't know if it's, like, on Hulu and Netflix, but they even talked about that, too. But, like, most of his wives, I think all of them but one of them, Pretty much all of them like had guns in their rooms and they like kicked their kids out and they were the ones like they were the ones the wives were the ones shooting from the windows like at the cops and so yeah those were the ones um, that were like most loyal i guess that's that's why they say they shot first because they because david got shot in the mm -hmm. initial and so mm -hmm. because once they heard sure. david got shot all the wives just started shooting back that's why they sure so like being shot first. just in um in terms of like the evidence that i'm aware of from um in regards to like who shot first here's um a quote from a um, dallas news article Koresh claimed the atf started the firefight but agents who got closest to the compound and journalists who were there said the davidians shot first kwtx's cameraman who filmed the gunfight testified in the 1994 criminal trial that gunfire originated from inside the compound in the first live broadcast from the scene key uh, kwtx's reporter said shots came from inside as atf agents concealed in cattle uh, concealed in cattle trader uh, trailers pulled up to the building and began jumping out they told the people to come out of the house, and those inside the house immediately started firing, and they began to return that fire. Another eyewitness, a Waco Tribune Herald reporter, told the news, quote, from what I saw, the Davidians shot first. So, like, this seems to be, like, the, the prevailing consensus among, like, the eyewitness testimony, but again, it's not, like, super strong evidence, like, either way, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have everything else to add on the initial shootout, or? No, um, I think federal government bad. Well, I think it's kind of fucked that like after it started dying down, they just refused to like uh, let Koresh get medical treatment. That was like one of the things that they withheld for fucking ages. Yeah, there was also um, that guy that got shot in the water tower, and they just like left his body there. They didn't let anyone like. Uh, that one's that one's sketch. I can't remember the details of that, but I know there's like there's a lot of uh, weird shit around that because I think that comes from like Thibodeau's book, um, well, and it's like, yeah, yeah, because I remember I'm I was not, talking like, about it. I was talking about it with you the other day, and then I went oh. and I and something was niggling at the back of my mind, and then I went and looked, and I was like, oh, it didn't happen quite exactly like I told Mel it happened. So like, I, I actually I, exactly I did why. hear about that like before you told yeah. me, and I just assumed like that. Wow, because like when I guess when you confirmed it, um, I was like, oh, this must be true. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Thibodeau reports that in his book, but he's but it's um. But it's more complicated than that. Yeah, it does yeah. look like. Um, yeah, again, some of the stuff that I read about the with regard to the uh, the the, the med allowing for medical treatment, it looks like there was somewhere between like like an hour, an hour to two hours of of gunfighting after apparently the Davidians claimed that they had called uh, for a ceasefire um, and emergency services, um, which I think is. But again sometimes i find some sorting out the exact timelines on events like this to be very very difficult in general um and the goal at least again what i tend to when i'm looking at stuff like that my <laughs> thought process is usually we should try to prevent these things from happening in the first place because it understandably becomes completely unreliable as to what people's memories are in a highly traumatic uh, event with fire go with shots going everywhere but i do think that if there was there could be some 
room for criticism if there was a, a, a request for medical aid that was not allowed or a ceasefire was not allowed um that could certainly make things worse now um one thing i don't uh, well i guess we, we can talk about this part later we'll, we'll get to this later okay yeah so we'll, we'll move on I, to I the know, I, sorry go, no, go all i want to say is like like i guess like the one thing is like if if people agree that the siege should have happened in a firefight then you are partially also agreeing that like the children's lives in that compound like also did not matter because like they knew that they were kids in that compound the entire time mm -hmm. like this was very well-known information and like they knew they should have known that through this entire siege they had to have minimized violence regardless of the condition of those children that should have been the number one priority and the victims that came forward that were talking about predation and the children that were released earlier like were given pretty much almost no treatment um like i definitely remember reading reports that the children um that were like released early as hostages like they were given under the care of like court or like uh like just appointed psychologists and they were trying to bait those kids like freshly out of the situation to like divulge as much information as possible which was like a really really bad um decision to make i don't know like i guess regardless of how you feel about the siege in general like it just shows that like regardless of what you think who shot first who didn't shoot first like if you agree that this was like a good event or it was handled the best way or whatever like it's still like their children still died and it shouldn't ever be excusable and like that's the problem with the justice system is it doesn't really care like war like warrants aren't moral like you can't really moralize these things if people are going to die especially children and that's really it Okay, um, so um, let's move on to the siege itself then. Um, so obviously, after the initial gunfight, there was a, I think it's a 50, is it 53 day siege? Um, 52. 52 day siege. It was obviously discussed, it's been discussed, dissected, talked about a hell of a lot. And what are our thoughts on, on that element of it? Well, I certainly think one thing um, that I found really interesting um, and uh, certainly worthy of critique on the side of the feds in this case um, is that I didn't even know this until I started researching it, but but the 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 same person who oversaw the Ruby Ridge incident also oversaw the Waco incident, and right. Uh, if you're talking about the hostage negotiator, Richard Richard Rogers, right? The hostage that's, rescue um, guy. That's a that's a fiction of the 2018 um, series. Is it uh, TV? Because I have there's citations yeah, of this. There's citations of this I, even in even in the wikipedia that, article yeah i mean maybe it's wrong. Talking, I, I don't know i don't know who we're talking about here if we're talking about the hostage negotiator that's not the case but like if you're talking about somebody else it might be i'm not sure uh maybe uh this says I know, I know in the 2018 think. series it was had richard rogers yeah ri yeah richard rogers uh was previously criticized for actions during ruby ridge this is multiple citations for this i mean i can go and double check on these but yeah yeah I, no, I'm just it was a, it was a it was a factoid i thought was uh certainly interesting but i don't know i mean i guess it's it's certainly possible that's not the case there seems to be yeah two, gary at least two or three different ones the, yeah gary nosner was the hostage negotiator at uh, waco what was um the guy you're talking about what was his name again um let's see here this was hold on uh I, I was just i was just opening up the the uh the archive of the fbi report on this that's cited um but it was the FBI hostage rescue team was headed by uh, hostage rescue commander Richard Rogers, who had previously been... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, Richard Rogers? Richard Rogers, yeah. At Ruby yeah. Ridge, Rogers overrode the site commander at Waco and had mobilized multiple teams to the same site. Yeah, this is the citation from... I mean, again, this citation is given as from a... Uh, as from the FBI's official report on this, now it's possible that I didn't, I haven't read the entire FBI no, report. No, well, I, yeah, 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 we're yeah. talking about two different people. That's what I was saying. Um, yeah, as far as I know, yeah, like, because there's, there's so many fucking like films and dramatizations and documentaries and so, like nearly all of them are inaccurate in some fucking way. Um, right. And I, I just I, thought I tried it was to avoid really <laughs> like the the 2018 TV series puts Gary Nosner. Um, the hostage negotiator at uh, Ruby Ridge and Waco, but he was actually only at Waco. Uh, yeah, it looks R like... Um, uh, Richard Rogers was at Waco and Ruby Ridge. Yeah, 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 and it looks like even though, like, he wasn't, as far as I can tell from reading this, like, he wasn't, like, the, uh, the like, the, the person at the site. He was, like, operating 
I mean, he may have been there himself, but he was not like the actual site commander. He was like the uh, the um, like commander of the the overall hostage rescue team. Which um, I, again, this was even critiqued. Again, this once again, the, the, I'll pull, I'm pulling most of this is from a citation in the, of uh, a summary of the Justice Department report um, on this, which. Uh, it seems to say that like he he was overriding local people a lot at both Ruby Ridge and um and Waco. Now I'm not entirely sure um mm. like if he was one of the people who was um, censured. I know there were a number of people who were censured after Ruby Ridge, but I don't know if if Richard Rogers was one of them. I don't yeah. have that information on hand. But there were um so like Gary Nosner is the hostage negotiator ended up getting basically like kicked out. Right, this was the because. There was this whole big fight going on between, uh, like in the FBI, between the people who wanted to like try and find a peaceful resolution and the people who just wanted to fucking breach the compound, right? Um, and eventually, obviously, like the negotiators lost that argument <laughs> because what happened happened. Um, but yeah, yeah, sorry. No, I, I okay. Yeah, so, I was going to say any other any perspectives to throw in on this one? Any the the siege i mean um, again at the uh, at uh, it, without trying to become repetitive to what i've said earlier there is uh from you know just from my sort of lay perspective and and also there appears to be some people who also you know have studied cults extensively and you know in my own research of having researched a lot of cults um there are there is a serious issue with playing into the prognostications of of profits in giving them the siege mm -hmm. that they want um because yeah. if you spend decades potentially with certain cults telling your followers that one day the federal government is going to show up and uh it's going to be you defending the gates of heaven against that and then that's literally what happens even if they kind of force it um again I believe it's very important for us to do better than that, right? Like the goal is not to think... respond in kind to a cult. The res the, mm. the goal is to out outwit them and out tactic them. And I think that avoiding these sorts of siege situations is ideal, which clearly didn't happen here. But again, this isn't the first. It would be one thing if this was like the first uh, event of its type. While it's one of the most famous, is not even close to the first event of its type. And I think there is a there is room to critique and criticize the FBI in their approach. Oh yeah, I mean cult experts at the time were saying like that a lot of the tactics were like really stupid uh, and that would just they just play into the narratives that Koresh had already spun. Um and I think Mel was right to bring up like the psychological warfare tactics are like playing um they played all kinds of shit, like songs and shit, but also mm -hmm. like the uh, the screams of rabbits, rabbits being killed, slaughtered, yeah. like over the over these massive speakers. Um, and like, I I don't know if you if you're just like making everybody in the compound like horribly fucking sleep deprived, um, and you're expecting them you're expecting to be able to negotiate with them and like have a rational discussion with them when you're literally like fucking driving them insane basically <laughs> like yeah that was like sort was, of my that's yeah. like that's the thing it's like people always look at violence usually um, sorry i've not been paying like, attention to chat to be i've been like thinking deaths, a lot like, people have to die or whatever there needs to be like a big thing but like I don't know psychological warfare is like incredibly damaging and like it's used all the time on crowds it's used all the time in protest movements it's something that like the federal government like and the state apparatus like loves to inflict on people and mm -hmm. if you don't if you get past psychological warfare then the government and the state has no choice but to like physically start doing things that you know the state does and like that's usually the line of like um predication and like this happened at waco um and the thing is is again like most of the time police officers like these institutions they don't know how to interact with people that are mentally ill they don't know how to interact with like p communities of color and they don't know how to generally interact with like you know religious movements and so like because they don't have these frameworks they usually always end up doing these things through brute force and there has to be enough legal jurisdiction and a cultural moral outcry to basically give them the authority and justification to do whatever they want 
which is sort of my biggest line in, in the sand against like anything that the state does like you shouldn't just like give moral or judicial credence for the states just do whatever and like that's why white supremacists and white power groups think they can just kind of do whatever now because like hey waco was a success in a way now we can just do like we've, we've seen this play out over and over and over again um well, and i'd have to think... say like you utilizing psychological warfare tactics is a, a, a really good way to also play into the exact paranoias fears and conspiracies that are peddled by well like alex jones let's say who was there mm. let's recall and um even if there is Alex some Jones paid to have the fucking uh new branch division church set up didn't he afterwards oh i'm not sure about that particular yeah, fact involved um, in that too yeah but but i think that okay. it's oh no, sorry. Continue, Demon. I'll make you point, and then yeah. Oh, I yeah. was gonna say. I mean, I think these sorts of things are 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 genuinely concerning. Um, regardless of like, I, I, I think there's a concern in in like, um, downplaying or um or minimizing the use of psychological warfare against victims of a cult i mean let's let's recall like uh, and this was not unknown at the time but i mean um sleep depriving people is has been well researched as a way to basically guarantee that someone behaves irrationally um and the government certainly knows this and that you know it makes you wonder like like I, I would assume this sort of thing is 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 the matter of, of incompetence and and cruelty a sort of normalized cruelty but uh for many people that is a very uh, a very understandable um point where they can spin off into saying that this is some form of like m like malice or conspiracy and that does fuel stuff I mean I can't imagine the sort of um, the sort of trauma that would even be inflicted on on the biggest victims there, the children. Like they're being subjected to psychological torture, and I do think that's very concerning. And was it even necessary? I don't think there's a good case to be made for that. Um, and uh, that has a pretty bad effect, right? Like the trade-off of perhaps having you know perhaps the, the the feds could argue oh well maybe we needed to do this but if if not if it was unnecessary well you've now played into the decades of uh conspiratorial screeching of right wing's group with something ve that's a matter of verifiable fact and public record that's very bad um so this is something you know this is one of the points i think people should take more seriously in looking back at events like waco that these sorts of um uh, psychological and cruel tactics can have a blowback on a on a cultural level that is unintended and can lead down the road to more extreme situations in addition to potentially making the situation at hand worse okay brilliant so what i want to do um is just throw it over because um i want to throw it over to know nothing and mouthy infidel do you have any disagreements with the points that are being made or anything else you want to add um not um, really no. The idea that like the this is what I call major bad is particularly the controversial. I mean, the ATF okay. literally updated their guidelines, um, like after the raid because Waco it was, was so poorly justified. handled. Like I, nobody here is like I, I think disagreed with that at any point. Um, Demon Mama, if you want to bring up when I did that, feel free to. Okay, listen. I, I think mean, we started like, that out at the beginning. I just I I um, think yeah, that I there's mean, I think there's a little bit of fast and loose uh uh Nis being really. played here inability to admit scared. when you may have been an edgy boy on twitter or whatever like no, i i admitted earlier in the panel that the wording of that tweet was vague and i immediately clarified it several times there, there was a lot of similar things I, i'm just saying that like this is anyway twitter you can't look we, we, we're past <laughs> it I mean, as long as you're willing to say <laughs> now that there's no no contention over the fact that the fbi in fact did not do everything right and was not completely justified in all their actions as long as you're uh, willing to acknowledge that they really, they really well, there's a difference between the two Twitter. like you can be wrong and still justified in your action like i think the fbi was justified in doing what it thought it needed to do to um, save the children right i mean problem well, 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 I mean, what would you, they used to no, the word for all children they threw that all out the door like, yeah you like there's multiple we, we've now acknowledged multiple we've all <laughs> what do you mean there's been consensus on this panel so far on multiple things that the fbi pretty we can all pretty much agree they did wrong and like those things no, no, i mean wrong and well, if, if, if they if they, they fucking, they're not just if they if this had been different if they had had 
air struck the facility and you still said well we needed to stop the, the the branch davidians are we still even though even though that well that was a wrong choice is that still justifiable i don't no, i think this is stretching the meaning of the word justifiable i think it's fair to say this yeah. was not okay yeah. these things were not yeah, okay like, to employ i agree it wasn't like, okay regard, like like if so they then it's not justified <laughs> like if they use psychological warfare on yeah, those children and then every single cult member like walk out people of that just building, can't be it wrong. still would have been unjustified. Like those okay, people are traumatized. Yeah, that's where I disagree. Well, well, okay, this is just to me. This just sounds use... like this just sounds wait, like wait, an wait, inability to be wrong. So you just think the state violence is okay? Like, what do you mean? Like, you're so, you're, you're using the word justified to mean different things. This is boring. You're talking. You're talking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, I want to. No, not really. Ever so slightly on this, like the whole. um you think state violence is okay thing like in the in the absence of another um another structure another authority that can intervene in a situation that we all fucking agree needed some intervention like the fbi and the atf are the people who like basically had to intervene in that situation and in that sense i do think that they were justified in intervening it's just like that's that's like kind of where it where it ends everything else is like very debatable and very and, and a lot of it is completely unjustified like the way that they chose to intervene is is just terrible thank right. you right like and I that's, guess, that's I guess if you, if, if you want to if you want to talk about if you want to talk about in this like particular instance like yeah like i don't necessarily like disagree with anybody but if we want to talk about it at, in the abstract um like framing it or like or in the concept. abstract i'm a fucking anarchist obviously i'm not down with this fucking state violence right, like, right. and that's know, like, in the, yeah and that's in the, in I, the far-flung fucking utopia maybe we'll have right. some kind of like community self-defense force that can deal with these things but like you know right, that's yeah no i just i just i'm just stating that, like like yeah no because i'm stating because like there's there is obviously like given the evidence and the situation that we have like my opinion on like that in particular and then there's like my broader opinion of you know state violence bad ooh woo like it's not good um but like that's like i said those are two completely different conversations and i don't want them to be conflated by like mouth mm. or nothing that's all that's reasonable okay, what was I, conflating? Yeah. I, I just don't want my arguments conflated that's i'm not saying that you were that you did i'm just saying okay. for future reference for anyone that just like wants to make sure that you know they have clarity for right. things and, that i say and as long as as long as we can i mean i think there is it is important to be able to uh distinguish clearly the difference between everything that happened was justified and certain actions were justified or intervention was just justified but i don't think that um i don't think that it is uh responsible honest correct um good to to give blanket justification for everything that unfolded especially when there are actions that are pretty agreeably non non-justifiable so that's as long as we're okay. as long as we're clear and in 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 agreement on that then sure yeah like i, I, think don't, I don't problem, i think I the don't... problem with the siege is that like all the actions that they took the cutting off of water and power, the uh, the blowing shit through speakers and so on, um, all of this stuff like really fucking hurt their ability to negotiate. Uh, all of this like consistently playing into the fucking like apocalyptic narrative that um, Koresh had already spun. Right. Like all right. of this means that like their their attempts to negotiate are going to be uh, you know squandered. And I, I, I agree. Like... Yeah, it really seems to me like because we know that there's like significant argument within the FBI about like uh, whether they want negotiation or whether they want to just like go in and, and take them down, you know, um, it's, it really feels like um, the, the people who wanted the assault uh, were like undermining the negotiators at almost every turn by just making their job like a million times fucking harder. Right. They would do things like uh one of the strike teams was like they would do things to the compound or they would send people to do stuff without telling the negotiators and so the negotiators mm -hmm. would wake up or they would get to the site and they would go why the fuck are they pissed now and then so they would just leave them there like well we we thought you weren't trying hard enough we're getting pressure from washington and janet um, reno and all these people so we want you to like do more so they would basically actually... just like sorry carry on no yeah yeah no i just they they like the feds like put them in a precarious situation um and mm -hmm. like a lot of the negotiators just didn't have choices like they basically were and, like okay this is the best of what you got and it was never ever acceptable like and, like pretty much after the middle of the siege like 
and and actually i hadn't thought about this before but it goes it goes beyond like the siege and the assault itself because when i was talking earlier about like the hostage negotiator who was speaking to koresh who didn't have accurate information on how the um people in the choppers were armed like the it it seems kind of obvious to me that that like divide between them um like prohibited certain information being shared between them which not only undermined it uh, undermined the hostage negotiators abilities to uh to to do their job um but it also helped spawn some of the fucking conspiracy theories about waco that persist to this day um like this had like long-reaching far uh like far-reaching um uh consequences um so like if anything like the the FBI and ATF needed to have like unified purpose um, and like fighting amongst themselves while they were trying to uh, deal with this incredibly difficult situation. Um, and and I, like, yeah, just it's, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. And it's been and, and like we all agree that the mistakes were made, but it's not just that mistakes were made. It seems like there's some kind of like there's like the cultural pressures there's the there's the sort of there's the bickering between them there's like the structural shit that's wrong here that just like that caused it all to go the way that it did yeah. well yeah and i think there's another a couple of things to build onto that is like i mean again this is all in the context of this being a 52 day siege there is really in my opinion no excuse that over the course of 52 days that the federal agencies who are the authorities they are supposed to be the authorities it would be irresponsible for for or that it would be like unfair to claim that some of their actions were not justified or or were not grossly incompetent um uh, i think that that's a fair claim especially when you take it in again when you take it in a broader history of how um, these organizations have engaged in the past that there were incidents that had occurred re in recent memory some of the same people were even involved and the same mistakes were made again um which mm. resulted in deaths and it you know it starts to make it starts to it starts to bring gen genuine questions about the seriousness with which uh you know this sort of internal ideology of these organizations is is taken like as to whether like how much value is being put on the life of these innocents at versus um ending the uh you know ending a a form of rebellion and i do think that those considerations are very important because again it has now led to us having to grapple with a lot of similar movements um since and i i find it i just there, I do believe there are very big problems with the way that the federal government has handled um, splinter, rebellious, anti-government groups, especially cults in the past. Um, you can even look into this with another group that had a very different history, like Scientology. A lot of people don't know this, but like L. Ron Hubbard's house was uh, after he had run-ins with the law on multiple occasions uh, and began to, to, to teach his followers that like, oh, the government's going to come for us. Like his house has towers in it that were built specifically to be able to house machine guns and like these are the these are the sorts of things that can be spun up and used by these cults so the federal authorities that are supposed to handle these things should be held to a high standard in my opinion okay so i feel i feel like we're reaching some consensus and agreement um we'll, we'll talk about the final thing and then that i think will be it so the the final aspect to this um is obviously the raid that occurred at the end of the siege um so I'm just interested, obviously we've spoken about the fire. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about um, the tactics and the strategies that were engaged in, why um, this, this, this you know, raid following the siege came about, whether that was justified, um, if there was another solution. What do people think about that? Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest problem with the raid was that it happened. Um... Two days after, um, they had finally gotten like someone who's like an expert on like the Bible or whatever to talk to Korash and give him an alternate explanation to his Bible passage that made him b believe that there needed to be a violent end to uh, the whole ordeal. And date Korash actually for said he was convinced and said, "Okay, you know what? Let me make an alternate manuscript of what my beliefs are now um, with the nonviolent ending part." And um, 
he said it'll take me a couple of weeks and then two days later he gets raided but he said at least that he was going to give in to authorities once he finished his manuscript and then they just didn't let him finish which seems pretty crazy to me and like on that it seems pretty unjustified to me that they wouldn't give him the time to do what he said he needed to do yeah um this it, it the decisions that led to the raid uh are confusing and complex and uh i really don't know uh what the the motivation um the motivation really is to end a siege prematurely in a situation like this unless there is um considerable evidence that like there is going to be a murder of the of the you know children who are being held hostage or something like that um i, I think the raid is is a is one of the more uh tragic parts of this entire event personally um and uh i i i don't entirely understand besides political pressure or or ideological pressure perhaps um to move in um it just seems like it was an unnecessary ex uh, um what's the what's the word i'm looking for i can't think of the word right now uh, escalation 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 of force um that i mean led to a lot of death death a lot of death and yes there had been some people who were already uh dead um but um there doesn't it doesn't seem to be that there's evidence um that there was like any sort of a jonestown situation planning on happening um or anything like that it it's very confusing to me as to why this was the decision that that the federal authorities decided to go with okay i mean does it does anyone else i mean if if everyone said their piece bad. i mean yeah, i, I, I mean, just it... kind of i guess I, i'm glad to see that people can agree on this uh on on this particular point um i feel like yeah. I'm a little surprised given how this started, but Waco Siege bad. <sighs> Waco Siege bad. Yeah. Waco Siege bad. Yeah, Waco Siege definitely bad. Um, the, lip, the Twitter libs on, finally just... got you to admit it. Yeah. Oh, no. The Twitter libs are, are signing off no. on it right now. <laughs> you caved. Waco what about Siege genocide? Bad. Genocide bad? <laughs> okay. I, I never I thought I would bad. see. I never so thought I would see consensus between these these parties but uh no genocide way I mean, bad. Yeah. it's been hard fought okay it has been I hard fought, like yeah. have some credit here absolutely <laughs> vivian listen uh, listen i'm i've, I've had a, i'm very happy that you were on this panel i'll say that much <laughs> and man and you know what uh, fed's bad <laughs> <laughs> that, that, the, okay, the, the Fed Boy meme is really funny, and I don't care what anyone says. I laugh at it all the time. <laughs> okay, it's so good. Well, I mean, I think, if, sorry, I think what's on. I think what's really really important to get out of this, right, is that like, um, Wait, you know, in in recognizing that this went really really badly, and recognizing that people like <laughs> fucking uh, people fucking died, right? Um, we we recognize that like those people they didn't they didn't deserve to die um most of them like i wouldn't call i wouldn't call any of them like fucking stupid or crazy um like i think we really do need to have uh, a better way of looking at cultic groups in general uh in terms of this this like coercive control right i i don't i I really, really fucking hate it. And I said it at the start, like, I really hate it when I see posts that are, like, disparaging cult members as, as crazy or stupid. And I hate it when, when people say, you know, the people involved in these cults are just all fucking evil. Um, and I'm not saying that that's, you know, what Mouthy Infidel was saying, although it sounded like that's what he was saying according to some of the tweets, but we won't do Twitter anymore. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, don't, I, mean, I think well, all something... I was saying was like uh mm -hmm. all I was saying was like Shu was like memeing about like how wasn't it so epic when the branch Davidians BTFO'd the feds? And I thought that was really fucking cringe. I wasn't saying like they're all individually evil. I was saying, hey, probably mm -hmm. don't be joking about how based like a child raping cult was. Like whether or not they were coerced or not, like is not relevant to what I was saying. 
Well, I mean, that's the thing, like... Demon Mama, like, you the got The thing, 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 thing that's frustrating to me, too, is, like, everyone always mm -hmm. makes cults to be these, like, like, the leaders are dumb, he's just a crazy guy that got really lucky. Like, David Koresh is a was, fucking genius, honestly. Like, this, this, this guy, this, this guy literally, like, like, yeah, he yeah, kind of did, he kind of did troll him. feds, in a yeah. way, like, like, the feds actually had to, like, they couldn't just, like, the hostage negotiator... I will give that guy probably more credit than any other person in this entire process. That man, like, legitimately tried to give Koresh everything that he wanted without giving Koresh everything that he wanted. Mm. And he was really good at his job. And he was he was frustrated that, like, the, the ATF or the feds, I can't remember if he was, which, host, which hostage negotiator he was, but basically they would do a thing without telling him. And then he would have to show back up and like fix it somehow. And he like never like it would set them back like another week or ten more days or another situation would happen. And he would have to. And then like at some point he just gives up. At some point they actually get mad at him because he's not giving them good enough results, even though he's trying. And he's not even an expert in bolts. Like he was pretty much an un. He wasn't like an unknown or anything, but like this wasn't his shtick. They just knew that he was good at this. So they yeah, were like, hey, we don't we yeah, like they, they, the FBI even admitted at the beginning that they had no idea how to deal with these people. So they're like, we're just going to find the best person that we have open right now. And they just found this dude and brought him. And even he I was just we like, need yeah. to, we need to get so much better at identifying um, like apocalypticism uh, in movements as well. Like, uh, you know, this is why I get really frustrated when people start calling things a death cult on Twitter. This is a fucking debate that I could have with Mind Waves and just shout at him for a couple of hours. Uh, because, you know, he posted the whole, like, what was it, uh, conservatism's a death cult thing the other day, right? Um, and I think we need to be a lot, I, you know, people sort of, it doesn't seem to me like people take cults seriously, right? Which... Maybe, I maybe they are my bias because I take them very seriously. Um, but like, when you say something like conservatism is a death cult, it's like, no, it's fucking not. It's fucking not. Like, well, it, like death like, cult is like a millenarianist apocalyptic cult that is like obsessed with like uh, mass death to bring around to bring about a new millennium or an, a new age, like like the Branch Davidians were. Or it's a cult that is like specifically obsessed with um, death and like worshiping uh, death. Right? It's not like conservatism isn't. There are death cultists in the GOP. There are fucking like q and honors and there are um dominionists and so I, on i mean i um, i will say uh yeah. like i i do have some pretty serious concerns about the cultish nature or the increasing cultish nature of large segments of the conservative movement in america and again i i say this as somebody who you know grew up in a cult uh in a in an incredibly extreme um uh christian movement that was convinced that the rapture was going to happen this was normal discussion when i was a child of mm. i mean i re i distinctly remember sit going on a long drive to a, a christian camp my youth pastor uh explaining to us his his theory about how the rap how he believed the rapture was going to come it's like this was common this was like common stuff in this in this church we it was talked about all the time um and it is shockingly a prevalent set of beliefs among the yeah. conservative party now i wouldn't really equate like conservatism as a whole with any individual one of these cults but the elements are absolutely there and i think that is a terrifying thing and i also i do... think conser it, well conservatism as an ideology isn't a death cult right like it's also pretty america-centric to yes, like analyze I... it the way that you just have by yeah. saying oh conservatives in america by and large like there's a huge prevalence of people who are involved in various death cults of course but i remind you that like conservatism is like a, a worldwide ideology and it's like naturally naturally religious people are kind of um attracted to conservatism because they tend to be traditionalist and mm -hmm. conservatism is all about conserving yeah. um i mean i do but, uh, think that like yes obviously i have being that i live here and mostly talk about american politics mo most of my commentary and thoughts on conservatism are about american conservatism which i do believe american conservatism is a particularly malignant form of, co of conservatism I think, I think we should be specific right because if yeah. we just say oh conservatism's a death cult then it's like oh well everything's a death cult that you don't like lib right and 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 like if you t if somebody turns around and goes hey like i'm worried that this group is turning into a death cult right yeah. um 
they have like apocalyptic prophecy. Yeah, I don't. Uh, well, I agree. At the same time, time at the, like, yeah. At the same time, I I think there is a lot of I I, I do agree that it, you know rhetoric should possibly be more more careful on this particular subject, especially going forward. I I do agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I will say I think um. And again, this is an this is an American perspective because I'm an American and I grew up in an American evangelical cult and all this shit. But um, there are a the, the the aspects of of the death cultiness um, and and that how that plays into the the, the sort of American brand yeah. of fascism is really becoming pro, pro, prominent, um, and it has led to mass death here in this country already. Um, to the degree that like i mean even today there was footage out of uh out of um i can't even i can't remember what city it was there was a protest an anti-mask protest of people burning masks in the middle of a pl plague that's killed six hundred thousand people like i don't know that this should be downplayed but i do think that we need to change the way that we understand I mean, this isn't quite the same thing as a death it's not the right same thing. but but yeah. there are but there are they're not, they're not very strong death. elements of this and it there's no um avoiding the fact that in the rise of donald trump to popularity um end times prophecies were a huge part of his popularity with a lot of um of christian well they were popular with yes, obama but, but, like well, well, obama well, 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 was like the uh, second coming of the devil and stuff yes like, but well, these things have I, always I recognize been involved that. in but but they've always been there well, okay this is not new can we just like say this was a reach and move on? Wait, what do you yeah, mean? Like what do you, the, what like, means a reach? Like, what are you actually like, talking this about? This is not like this is. There's, there's, I, I don't understand. I feel like you're talking about different things. The point that I'm trying to make is that there is a very, very, very um, concerning um, uptick in in the conservative movement in the United States as to how much they integrate cr specifically evangelical um, doomsday rhetoric been around since okay i don't care mel like you're yeah, not talking about the same thing and how many more people are like embracing it i completely right. agree there's with a you. lot like, of people and and again a really good example of this especially the like really crazy evangelical bent of QAnon. but essentially QAnon just says like you know that we're gonna win the fight against the deep state and we're gonna usher in a uh, an age of world peace and winning the fight against the deep deep state means mass executions and putting hillary in gitmo and so right well and it goes more than that though which is this is what i'm trying yeah. to speak to as having a, a different background than a lot of people here having come from a ridiculously and still growing popular extremist fundamentalist christian group these are gr now christianity as a whole is losing in popularity but extremist christianity is growing right now and the reason and part of how they're doing that is using i mean the same way that they've always have they build these movements around these uh, mm -hmm. uh, they incorporate and digest and absorb parts of QAnon, and there's there's interchange between this. I mean, look at how uh, if you even take a look at like the speeches. This is just an offhand example um, of this, but if you even look at the speeches of like the My Pillow guy, how he weaves Christianity in almost seamlessly into these these absurd oh, yeah. mass like execution an QAnon stuff. QAnon, yeah, <laughs> oh, not insane. Uh, yes, but. but he's a on it and he's a fundamentalist christian right like, and and, yeah. and this is huge and this and the christian right in america is a mainstay of the gop they are perhaps the most powerful faction to this day i know that everybody everybody had their atheist phase and people kind of think that religion is like declining but it really isn't it's they have a lot of power still and it's really concerning especially when you know that the government that is potentially going to be locked in conflict with a lot of these people potentially because of it, situations like this might respond in ways that just that in their minds further justify their beliefs to me that is a very scary thing and i really want to send a message out to everybody out there something that i believe deeply is that we should start to really come to understand how indoctrination works and how that type of um like cult yeah. and religious mind mind control it sounds ridiculous to call it that yeah. but that is what it is because this isn't going to be something especially for americans especially people who are going to be potentially arguing against or or going up against um a lot of fundamentalists in the coming years please please start to learn about this yeah. stuff and pay attention I, I, to I, it I, and I, don't I, underestimate I, it please um, 
I don't like the term mind control because it sort of conjures up certain kind of like colloquial definitions in people's minds. I tend to use like either coercive control or like thought control because I think they're more helpful at like com uh, communicating. I'm not yeah, having a go at you. No, that's perfectly that. fair. I okay. that would use the term mind control. I think when communicating, uh, like communicating to the layperson, I think those kinds of terms are better. Yeah, usually um, what I would say is okay, something so, like indoctrination. So, so, sorry, I was I was expecting this to go for about two hours, and um, I don't know. We <laughs> <laughs> we've been over that now and we're kind of moving so so basically i think you know we kind of established and covered the main stuff um does anyone else have anything to add on the main topics or any other contention they want to discuss before we wrap things up can somebody go into uh, chat, should chat do and like a final drop statement my, and drop my links something? yeah let's, let's do that Maybe no, no, no that that's fine that's that's fine if everyone's happy to do that i think else i don't want to talk about but it doesn't seem like there is so um what, what i'll do i'll start in the um the bottom left and we'll go around one by one so mouthy and fidel do you want to give any final thoughts and then just give yourself like a, a shield okay um yeah sure i mean just like a brief overview i think that um the initial search warrant was justified the atf involving themselves and in what was going on with the branch davidians was justified i think the branch davidians were the ones who lit the fire um I think the ATF fucked up in a variety of ways, um, uh, which is why the uh, government subsequently updated their guidelines as a result of what happened. Um, yeah, and I don't think any of this is particularly controversial, so. Okay, and uh, give yourself a, a shill. Oh, so, um... so, so your channel or whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Mouth the Infidel. That's what my YouTube channel is called. Usually I don't talk about cults. Usually I tend to talk about like using arguments to justify like good economic policy and civil rights stuff. Um, I guess this is like somewhat of a departure, but yeah, I guess that's what I do. I also have Twitter, on which I tend to be a bit more spicy. Okay, cool. Um, Viv? Me? Oh, yeah, just a little bit more empathy for members of cults and stuff. And if you want to learn how to how to do that, how to acquire that empathy, uh, I'd suggest you follow me on Twitch, Twitter and YouTube. Um, definitely Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, I get more followers and my number goes up. And not only does that give me endorphins, but it also makes me look like I'm a serious individual, which I really want to deceive certain large figures into thinking that I'm some kind of serious person that they should engage with so that I can get interviews with them. Because that's literally what I love doing is uh, talking to people who have more expertise on issues than I do. Uh, and, and bringing those people to this platform so that you guys can hear what they have to say and even ask Viv them questions cool. if you want to. Uh, so yeah, definitely follow me on Twitter. I'm I'm Max Vivian Wolf. I do cults and extremism. Uh, and if you want to catch me anywhere, you'll catch me at 4 p.m. EST on Touring News' channel every uh, Saturday. Okay, Mel? Hi. Way go bad. Um, yeah, so basically, the entire response to this um, situation, I think, was highly incredibly botched by the FBI. Um, cults are really bad, everyone. David Koresh was a was a very questionable human being, but he played the feds really, really, really hard. Uh, and, yeah, go for it, Wendell. You know, the government has a really just that. unnaturally bad response to these kinds of things. And yeah, I'd be good with as that. we saw with the Capitol insurrection and the government response to that, we are going to keep having these things happen over and over and over again until we start holding uh, groups accountable and, you know, building other institutional power structures. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Communism is pretty cool. Um, I'm a fucking B tier shit poster on Twitter. Um, I piss off all these people sometimes. Them sometimes they're my friends. Uh, sometimes they all hate my guts, but it depends uh, on the day of the week. Um, my name's Mel. I just hang out on Twitter. Um, you can follow me at Twitter. Chaos is Mel. I don't really care like about the uh, serotonin and dopamine like Viv does. So you know, whatever. If you like dumb bullshit, follow me on Twitter. Thanks everyone. Love you. Okay. Um, no nothing. I I feel like you know. You have everyone here didn't get as much of a chance to speak, so I apologize for that. But obviously, lots of uh, personalities well, here. It's, uh, it's up to um, me. I chose not to insert myself into the conversation <laughs> as much, so nothing to do no, with you. No worries. Okay. Um, well, in any case, um, you know, I'll give you a two minutes unfiltered. Say your final thoughts and give yourself a little self shield. Okay. Yeah, sure. So um, this was thanks for having me. Uh, this was nice to be part of. Um, it's cool that we were able to pretty much reach like a consensus on most issues once we actually were able to talk in person versus on Twitter. So that's cool. Um, 
Yeah, this was a nice combo. I don't need to sum up what the conclusions are. I think we get it at this point. Um, I guess the biggest lesson here is like maybe try to be more clear on Twitter with what you think and like answer questions, direct questions when you're asked. I think that can make things easier. But yeah, that's why it's always better. It's not just the debate bro thing to want to talk over Discord. It's just easier to get things uh, figured out. Um, you can I'm Know Nothing TV on Twitter and Twitch. You can follow me there. Thanks. I, sorry, just before I get to the email, I just want to say, it does annoy me a lot when people are like, oh, no, I'm not going to talk to you. And I appreciate you might not want to go on a stream or whatever, but then I'll spend hours on Twitter arguing about it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just like, yeah. just, just fucking go to call about it. It's not a debate bro thing to talk. Do you know what I mean? Maybe you don't want it, but whatever. Anyway, sure. sorry, I just wanted to add that on. Um, Demon Mama, please, by all means, go ahead. Say your piece. Do your show. Hello, my name is Demon Mama. You can find everything at demonmama.com forward slash live if you want to come to the live stream i will be doing a q a after this where people can ask me questions or debate with me or call me an idiot if you really think i am and then i'll call you an idiot back um and it would be a, a jolly good time so if you're interested in coming by uh feel free um and we'll talk and uh yeah my i guess my general uh you know, conclusion here is uh, I was very happy to see that we were able to talk about some serious issues um, after we got through the initial initial uh, uh, blood at the beginning. Um, I, I, as you know, I'm a, a large critic of, of Twitter, so I have my my imps code for a reason because I think that. Um, oh yeah, it's demonmama.com forward slash live. Uh, somebody told me I didn't actually say the URL. Um, sorry, but yeah, uh, Twitter is a place where it's very easy to uh, put up a big front and be a goofball and shit post and say stupid things that um, then you, you know, weasel out of or walk back on or whatever. Um, but people should do that less and also have conversations like this because then actual ideas get discussed and a whole bunch of people learn stuff, which I think probably happened for a lot of people in the audience today. If you want to learn more, come on by my stream. And uh, thanks for having me on, Judd. No worries. Thanks very much. Right. That's it. Panel's done. Thanks for coming by. I really Way appreciate so it. Okay, that's it now, okay? Thanks for coming. Listen, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for coming on Hashing Out Your Differences, and I'm sure I'll speak to you all soon, okay? No, nothing bad. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> that's when I've... That's when I've... <laughs> all right, all right. That was fun, huh? That was fun, huh? I told you it was going to be bloody. I told you it was going to be bloody.